to the Alex Jones Show on this Tuesday, July 19th, 2016, second day of the RNC convention in Cleveland. Alex Jones will be joining us live from Cleveland. He'll be doing most of the show today. Uh, before he gets uh, on the line to uh, do the show, I'm just looking at the headline news, and we've got, uh, guess what? Yet another Muslim attack. Another day, another Muslim attack. When I was looking at this uh, attack on the train, I kept saying to my wife, I said, well, you know, his name is Muhammad. And it, about a uh, half hour or so ago, they, they released information. Yeah, and it's, it's Muhammad. Uh, of course, he's a child. Uh, so I guess maybe really what he needs is a teddy bear. Maybe Glenn Beck can go there and give him a teddy bear, this young child who came here. It's, it's just so amazing to me, and we're going to talk about that in detail when we come back. Um, you know, it, it's not just that one, okay? It's, it's not just another day, another attack, okay? We've got the axe attack, 18 people injured, uh, some of them fighting for their lives. Uh, who knows how horribly they've been maimed uh, elsewhere in France. Uh, that was in Germany, elsewhere in France. We've got a mother and her three daughters stabbed by a man because he thought they were inappropriately dressed. Okay, uh, guess what? He's going to be Muhammad too. Okay, uh, then we got another one. Okay, third one here. Uh, this was another knife attack in uh, Germany. Uh, this guy is uh, his name is guess what? Muhammad. Uh huh. Yeah, it's kind of like that movie. Remember American Carol? They began the movie. They're out in the desert. There's a Bunch of Muslims in the hills about to attack another city, and, and some guy stands up and goes, Muhammad. And they all stand up, what? <laughs> it's like either Muhammad or Ali or Muhammad Ali, which is this guy's name, Muhammad Ali, Hussein. Uh, a bit of a lack of imagination in terms of uh, names in that culture, evidently. Uh, what he tried to do, there was a group of about 50 immigrants uh, surrounding a policewoman and a, and a policeman. And uh, in that mob, uh, Muhammad Ali came out and... Uh, Stabbed the woman. Stabbed the woman. Uh, but he's going to not be deported, and his punishment will be cut in half because they say he's young age, okay? He's claiming now that uh, he was only 18, that he's 18, okay? Where actually they know that he's 26 years old. But that's okay. You know, if you're Hillary Clinton or you're a Muslim, the facts are all relative. It's whatever you feel like. You know, if you want to be a man, uh, you can be a man, even if you're a woman or vice versa. If you feel... If you're feeling like you're 18, uh, even though you're 26, uh, you can be, you know, 18 if you're an illegal immigrant. Not a problem. You know, it's just kind of, uh, you can just transfer right out of those penalties. And you know, it was just back in uh, May 10, uh, when I found this, when I was looking for details on the uh, axe attack on the train, I'm looking for German train attack, and I find yet another one, a Munich knife attack. Uh, this happened in Germany. This was back on May the 10th. Uh, yes, this is all, uh, also an Allah Akbar, Allahu Akbar, okay, which I guess is really kind of uh, Arabic for move on, there's nothing to see here. Uh, they're saying in this particular case uh, that he suffered from psychiatric issues. Yeah, yeah, it's an insane religion. It truly is. Uh, he suffered from insane uh, psychiatric issues. Uh, they also said he's a German citizen, a German citizen now. So, you know, again, don't, don't blame it on uh, Islam. Don't blame it on migrants. I think we need to stop calling it Stockholm Syndrome, and I think we need to start calling it the Merkel Syndrome, because that's really what's going on. Meanwhile, we've got uh, CNN's Peter Bergen, as we pointed out uh, over the weekend, blaming the truck attack uh, by that Mohammed as, a, uh, as European fascism. You know what? Let's be a little bit more accurate with this. More accurately, it's the rise of Muslim fascism in Europe, because that's why they were brought here. That's why all these young men, single men, were brought here by Angela Merkel and the elite. They wanted a clash of civilization. They've got it. We look at this other article from the Drudge Report on The Sun. Look at what they did, the way they reported this on British television. What they did was they had to report this Nice attack, the one with the truck. They put a woman in a hijab. And they said, really, w would you have done that? Uh, you, you really want to avoid the fact that uh, Muslims dominate women, don't you? That's what they did. Can you imagine if they'd done an Orthodox Jew to talk about Israeli issues? Well, if you look to the left, if you look to the right, you see globalist-controlled political parties all over the world. And when you see people like Nigel Farage or Ron Paul or folks like Donald Trump, they are riding the populist wave of resistance 
smashing through the lies and disinformation and exposing just how controlled the system has gotten. Alex Jones here live, about 300 yards away from the main entrance of the RNC meeting 2016. And we're going to be here for the next four hours today. We've got our reporters, Wayne Madsen and Josh Owens, going back into the lion's den today. Uh, we also have Leanne McAdoo and, of course, uh, Margaret Howe, also going to be on the street uh, talking to some of the socialist and BLM uh, radical groups that are George Soros funded on the street. We've got Joe Biggs uh, and Richard Reeves out roving uh, as well. We've got uh, billboards driving around on big trucks. We have digital billboards, Hillary for prison. And, and magically, there's a radio station that just popped up on an open frequency, 94.5, that everybody's talking about and listening to. And we have big banner trucks telling folks about that. Uh, so we have InfoWars Radio cutting through the lies and disinformation. You know, as soon as I learned that uh, Hillary was censoring our aircraft uh, over this event uh, via Obama and the, and the uh, FAA, which they've never done in any convention before, uh, both at this convention and the one coming up next week in Philadelphia, magically some flyers got printed up uh, for 94.5 uh, underground RNC radio, 94.5 FM, and then magically Infowars.com uh, transmissions are being sent out on it. And magically, what is it, 4,000 of these flyers uh, got handed out on the streets uh, here of Cleveland, just magically. And then magically, because you censored us, there's a GoFundMe account people are flooding with money that a separate national air uh, campaign company is running to put Hillary for prison banners up all over the nation. And then magically, uh, it was in hundreds of newspapers over the weekend, hundreds of TV stations on ABC News nationally, CBS News nationally, CNN nationally, Fox News nationally. Uh, folks I talked to uh, in New York saw it. Uh, old Ted Nugent gave me a call today. Uh, actually, last night we talked this morning. Again, uh, he's going to be coming on the uh, show in the next few days. Uh, that's how I get Ted Nugent on. Uh, uh, not through his left side, there's a great crew, they're great people, they're all busy. I just kind of go, hey, Ted Nugent, we need you to come on the show. One time I said that about a year ago, and Ted like called up that day. Yeah, I heard the show, I want to come on. So, uh, Ted Nugent, by the way, was not invited to speak at this. The RNC didn't want him. It's not Trump, it's the RNC. They're scared of him. He's too radical. He's effective because he tells the truth in the face of radical globalist attacks on a republic. They're the radicals. Our response meets and matches them. We're not the radicals defending what this country was founded on and what made us great. So Ted Nugent will be heard at the RNC either tomorrow or the next day. We're looking for the best slot because he's playing 300 shows a year. He's playing like six shows a week right now. He's in Florida. He just left Austin. And uh, so that is all that's all basically unfolding right now. So look for Ted Nugent here with us. Uh, Dinesh D'Souza is going to be on the show tomorrow. We have an interview Leanne McAdoo did with the filmmaker uh, who's got the new film out that will bring down Hillary. Way more hardcore than 2016. Showing how they're organized crime and how the Clintons are an organized crime syndicate. And, uh, and the point is, yes, you already know that. But now, after they made him a political prisoner, he's only doubled and tripled down. That's going to be uh, coming out nationwide as well. And that interview is up on... Infowars.com. Here, obviously, is the big news that we have for everybody. Another religion of peace uh, event took place uh, on a train in Germany where people got killed by a axe-wielding Afghan immigrant who wasn't happy with all the welfare and all the other uh, goodies. And, of course, no mention of him being an Islamicist. You had to read deeply into the articles, even find out who he was. It was just some crazy guy with an axe, like... Some crazy guy with a truck or some crazy people in San Bernardino or crazy people at Fort Hood or crazy people in Paris at the Eagles of Death concert and uh, crazy people, uh, you know, out shooting the cops. And, you know, you had five cops dead. It was a big national deal. Now three are shot dead in Baton Rouge. It's kind of like just blown over. I mean, come on. The police need to reform themselves. And again, folks, the globalists have been federalizing our police. The globalists have been causing most of the problems we have. But regardless, this is our country, our police. It's not George Soros' business to go finance a bunch of communist radicals and others to push an agenda of killing police and then act like that's reform. It is outrageous sedition and destabilization against this country. Now, obviously, here's the other big news. The spin machine is going into overdrive. And yes, I have a problem with Mike Pence, the governor of Indiana, for his globalist trade deals. 
but he's a Christian, he's pro-gun, he's pro-life, staunch. He's a thousand times better than Newt Gingrich. But here's the deal. He'll need Pence, who is a deal maker, to navigate the House and the Senate and to work with the governors. And he has been the head of the Governors Association and so many other things. It is not an issue compared to Hillary's crimes and her agenda to come after our basic liberties. And you see CNN, Fox News, all of them making a big deal out of Pence. They're trying to hype libertarians and conservatives into making this a big issue when the issue is what does Trump do once he gets in? If he uses Pence as a mechanism to get things done, but get a populist Americana agenda done, that's great. And that's what Trump says he's doing with this. And he goes in there with his no-nonsense 60 Minutes interview we'll play some clips of later, and, you know, basically says, okay, he voted for the Iraq War, he was given bad intelligence. The difference is Hillary's been involved in all the fake intelligence, and they spend that as hypocritical. No, this is who he's chosen. He didn't do the Iraq War. He was against the Iraq War. That's another reason I'm supporting Trump. So we're moving forward here, uh, and this is a distraction from everything else that's happening. So I'm done talking about the Pence situation. If he gets into office and they go sideways, then it'll be an issue. Right now, we're facing Hillary, Rodham Clinton, the crime boss, who's coming after all of our liberties, all of our freedoms, and wants to sew this country up for the globalists. And we don't stop her. That's our problem. Take Mrs. Trump, Melania. 17-minute speech. We're going to play parts of it. I get up this morning, and I hear, oh, my gosh, she plagiarized it. Oh, my gosh, she's such a horrible woman. The left is out calling her horrible names, calling her all this horrible stuff. She said, these are basically my words put together with the speechwriters. I only read it once because they're my words. And then I went and I read the uh, Michelle Obama so-called speech. This is like saying if Melania Trump at her wedding played, here comes the bride, here comes the bride, done, you know, all dressed in white. This is the standard speech that you intro, that every person intros about my values and my parents brought me up to do this and this is what I stand for and it's why I love America. I don't know who first said this. It's been said for hundreds of years. This is the standard intro of a speech and it's not even word for word. It's very different. But I've always talked about my family, my values, being brought up to believe in uh, these things. Is that plagiarizing? Mrs. Obama? I mean, this is like if you claim that, I mean, Starbucks wants a copyright now for their new symbol to be a green circle. In fact, they've gone out and gotten, that is their trademark, a green circle, and they're claiming now they want the color green. Uh, Disney says they don't want you to be able to write the name Mickey Mouse in your own article because that word or that name is copyright. This is total red herring bull. But I'll tell you who's plagiarizing. Obama claims he's pro-America. Obama claimed he was a Christian. Obama claimed he was going to cut taxes. Obama claimed Obamacare was free. Obama claimed he wasn't coming after our guns. Obama claimed, Obama claimed, Obama claimed. When he's a foreign globalist operative here to destroy this country. So he's the imposter. He's the plagiarizer claiming he's an American. He's the plagiarizer claiming he's Americana. He's the plagiarizer having his truth squads eight years ago run around the country saying, we'll have you arrested if you lie about him and say he doesn't want to cut taxes and if you say Obamacare isn't free, and if you say Obama isn't a Christian, I can play the Truth Squad news clips nationally and from Missouri and other states where they said we will arrest you if you say he's a Muslim. Well, we all know now he is a radical jihadi. We now know he's financed it worldwide. So Obama is the plagiarist. He's the imposter. He's the counterfeit. He's the fraud. He's the phony $3 bill. He's the piece of trash. But I actually have screenshots of it. And I'm going to go over some of this coming up where, where I, I have screenshots of Melania's speech. And then I have screenshots of her supposed speech. And they are vastly different. But it's all the same thing about my values and my parents and why I love America. And, I mean, it's just like Schwarzenegger's speech in 2004 at the RNC that I watched from 50 feet away. And I thought, oh, my gosh, the same old speech everybody gives. I mean... Is this a tired speech? Is this a speech everybody gives? Yeah. But it's kind of true, you see. I mean, that's really what your roots are about. So it's like saying, you know, if, if she gave the Star Spangled Banner a salute or if she did the uh, salute of the flag and, 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 and the national anthem or something, people said, oh, she plagiarized. No, she's stating the common Americana uh, theme. She's, she, she's quoting what we are, who we are.
And so you could see it as dry and old. You could see it as said over and over again. You could even say it's plagiarized from everybody else. But it's the American experience. So, yeah, I like fast cars. I like freedom. I like apple pie. I like the Second Amendment. I like free market. I like, uh, you know, basic pro-family values. Am I plagiarizing that? I guess so. I guess, I guess I'm plagiarizing it from my ancestors that helped found this country in 1775 and 1776. And my ancestors that helped found Texas. And my ancestors that were involved in every war and every fight for this republic. But I'm not plagiarizing it. It's my blood. It's my genetics. It's who I am. It's my birthright. And Obama is the usurper that's coming in here trying to steal my birthright and your birthright. Because it doesn't matter when your family got here. It doesn't matter if you, you know, weren't even born here like Trump's wife. She embraces America. She promotes freedom. She promotes prosperity. She promotes women's uh, dignity and freedom. And that's why she's American. But it's bigger than America. It's about the Renaissance worldwide. Now, when we come back, we're going to plow through a ton of news and the latest attempt last night for them to try to hijack and, and, and force a vote to steal the delegates, to steal the votes, and not let Trump get the nomination. That failed, but our own Wayne Madsen and other reporters on the ground learned they've got a sneak attack coming Wednesday night. They plan to walk off as delegates, implying that Trump has been overthrown. I've gotten pretty wound up and pretty angry because there's a story up on Infowars.com that ties into all this. Tolerant leftist media calls Melania Trump a dumb bitch who can't speak English. Hillary supporters fine with misogyny and bigotry when it comes to insulting a conservative. And of course, the media is piling on because when a woman threatens Hillary, she's got to be destroyed. When a woman exposes Bill raping her, she's got to be destroyed. This is what Hillary does. So you have this lady get up and give a classic speech about her family and her roots and, and why she loves America and her values. And it's vaguely like a few lines of speeches written by other speechwriters by Michelle Obama. And all I care about is the fact that somebody like Melania, I believe, and she's shown, believes what she's saying. We know that Hitlery and Michelle Obama uh, and Barack Obama and all these other people, they really are out to get this country. They want to dominate it. They want to break it. They want to control it. And that's what this election is all about. It's about a repudiation of the globalist and the Bush and Clinton crime family. you got the Bushes and all the other top Republicans not coming to this thing. you got the RNC operatives in there trying to block people like Ted Nugent saying he's too radical. Think about that. Ted Nugent's an absolute barn burner, loved by conservative populists all over the country. He has the mantle of, of, of Chuck Heston. He's the guy that helped get the NRA back in line to actually defend the Second Amendment and stop waffling with the help of gun owners of America. And, of course, this show. And, oh, we don't want you to speak. You're too radical. It's a badge of honor that the RNC doesn't want Ted Nugent to speak. I don't even attempt to do it. I don't even... Let me explain this. I always intend to stay as a referee on the outside of things trying to simply awaken the people. I don't care about being invited to the White House if Trump wins. I could care less about eating off fine China. And I think Trump's the same as well. I actually want to see this country great again. I actually want to see industry here again. I know globalism is designed to deindustrialize us in a post-industrial world. That's the treaty that George Herbert Walker Bush signed us onto, but Congress didn't ratify. That's what Agenda 21 is. They want to sit there and ridicule us for talking about that, acting like it doesn't exist. Oh, there's no world government. Oh, there's no carbon tax. Oh, none of this is true. We're not going away. We're not backing off. We're not stopping. We're here overlooking the RNC with a vantage point on the globalist operatives inside trying to sabotage Donald Trump and derail it. And you heard me. You heard me. We have these neocons under siege. We have these rhinos under siege with aircraft and billboards and radio right here blasting everything. And let me tell you, I'm going to go out on the street later today, I think, and just randomly walk around with a live feed, maybe even in the fourth hour, and just let you see how many people are listeners of every race, color, and creed. That's what scares the globalists. I guarantee you, you send mainline reporters out there, people don't even care who they are. But they love InfoWars because we are populist, and we're bigger in many cases than the mainstream media. And that's not bragging about InfoWars. That's basically stating the exciting facts that their time is coming to an end. Their reign 
is coming to an end, and they know it. And InfoWars is only one focal point and one example of that. And I'm going to play part of my speech when we come back from yesterday. The full 17-minute speech is up on InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. We've got better audio versions of it going up uh, soon. This is something someone else shot just off an iPhone. We've kind of got a bottleneck of all the powerful videos and things that are going to be uh, and interviews that we've already gotten. I'm going to surprise folks. They're going to be coming out today and tomorrow. But I just want you to know we're in a good position. You're in a good position if you realize we're in a good position with history on our side, with truth on our side, to really give the globalists a run for their money if we don't give up. But that's why they're changing the subject from what Melania Trump had to say in her speech to claiming a few lines of it sounded something like something Michelle Obama said. As if, see, there's the evil white racist woman stealing from the poor black lady again. There she is, the horrible slave owner, or she has no connection to that, but it doesn't matter. You know, the horrible demon that actually ate black children, cooked them up in stew pots, uh, Melania Trump, and, and of course, of course, you know, Donald Trump's evil and racist and homophobic as well because because the mainstream media, the mainstream media said so. This is just how they inject this narrative over and over and over again. But when we come back, I've got part of the speech I gave. We'll play it from the intro uh, at the rally they tried to stop, the rally they tried to shut down, the rally the globalists failed that was extremely successful. I'd say there's probably about a thousand people there, but, but what really mattered was that hundreds of newspapers and TV stations carried it, and large chunks of what I said and what other people said, what Roger Stone said about the Clintons and their abuse of women and more and the Chinese missile secrets and selling us out to foreign powers, it all got out on TV, radio, and print all over the country yesterday, just like our aircraft with the Hillary for Prison did, devastating victories, and we're just a small, small part of the resistance. It's really great to be here in Cleveland, 2016, I tell you, the establishment of Soros and others have done everything they can to try to shut down our free speech. They try to destroy our sovereignty. They try to attack our Second Amendment. And everything they've done is blown up in their face. They are failing, and Donald Trump is surging in every major poll across the country. And of course, what's happening is a lot better than a Donald Trump or a Ron Paul or an Alex Jones or a Matt Rudge or anybody. It's giant because it's about you and people worldwide. Nationalism, sovereignty, true free market capitalism is rising worldwide as the globalists try to implement their world government. It is dead on arrival. If you think the awakening we've seen so far is big, this planet and the globalists have not seen anything yet. Ago. And one day, the 30 mile exclusion zone, where you couldn't fly airplanes with banners. One day after we announced we were going to have all the airplanes of the DNC and the RNC covered with airplanes flying, as soon as that happened, as soon as that unfolded, they put an exclusion zone on, shutting all aircraft down. That is because they're afraid of free speech. And that's what they always try to do is come and disrupt people and take over their free speech. These are not liberals. These are anti-free speech, anti-freedom scum. But you need to get their ass to work for it. The tribes will be free, these globalists come in and they cause a bunch of division, they stir up a bunch of racism, they get everybody fight with each other. And you know what? It didn't work. And all this garbage has brought America together. We're coming together and Americans see through this crap and people all over the world see through it and know what's happening. So I can tell you, I don't like it when you're cheering me coming up here. I want to salute all of you that are out here in defense of liberty, standing against tyranny. I salute you. The answer, the answer to 1984 is 1776. 1776. Yeah. We're not backing down. We're not giving up. 
person that uploaded that video we're going to upload the hd and higher quality later today but i wanted to air five six minutes of that we're going to have wayne madsen coming up in the next 15 minutes or so inside the convention center that's about 300 yards away from me we're overlooking it uh where last night he was able to talk to delegates and super delegates about the plan in the aftermath of them trying to steal the election from trump trying to have a no vote uh and not honor the popular vote uh, a bunch of you know, you know never trump people who promised they wouldn't do it, but then, of course, as I predicted, they did it. wasn't hard to predict. Now they're back at it again. This time they have a secret plan that Madsen discovered Wednesday to try to walk out uh, at the end of Ted Cruz's speech. And we have Glenn Beck going on Meet the Press and actually coming out for Hillary Clinton for president. Uh, truly sickening, ladies and gentlemen. There's a Business Insider article that's pretty good. It's linked up on DrudgeReport.com, the man who could have stopped Donald Trump. And they asked the question, why did uh, Matt Drudge, who probably could have stopped Donald Trump, why did he not stop him? Well, he was very fair covering all the major Republican candidates. And I would say even lean towards uh, people like Cruz early on, just from my watching. But as the dirty tricks rolled out and as the intimidation rolled out and as People bullied uh, Drudge saying, don't you dare, you know, link to anything that Trump's doing. When the media would lie about Trump, Drudge would actually put what Trump had said. And, and, but, but I haven't talked to Drudge about this, but this is my same reason for supporting uh, Trump. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing this is why Drudge did it, because this is why I'm supporting Trump. It became apparent that they were stealing the election from Bernie Sanders. It, it, it became apparent they were going to give it to Hillary. And here's the deal. Forget anybody but Trump, anybody but Hillary. And then you watch Trump's courage out there with the death threats. You watch him lose all these businesses and golf courses and hotel deals and 
beauty pageant deals worth hundreds of millions of dollars. You watch him spend 50 million of his own money. You watch him say Hillary for president. You watch him say our economic surrender is over. You watch him expose Hillary as a communist Chinese agent. You watch him come out and expose that Black Lives Matter is a George Soros group to destabilize the country. I've gone from holding my nose 14, 15 months ago supporting Trump to being 100% behind him. 100% behind him. And I think I can speak for Drudge just, just because I know Drudge is a common sense guy. I, I, you know, I've read his writing. I've seen what he links to. I've gotten a pulse for what Drudge thinks. Uh, and, and I think that I can give you a dead reckoning guess here that it's exactly why I just told you he's supporting Trump. But that'd be like if I guessed why you supported Trump. I mean, is it the same reason? He's the underdog. Both political parties are against him. The establishment we hate that keeps giving us new world order is against him. The whole power structure is throwing money against him. The media is lying against him. The media is distorting what he said. And he's running against Hillary Clinton. I, I mean, that is a no-brainer why Matt Drudge supported Donald Trump, because he's clearly the best choice. He's clearly the guy we need. And it's such an epic time to be alive, historically, at this crossroads, where the choice is so clear. I don't think Donald Trump's going to be perfect. Nobody is. But he is not out to get this country, and he does want to make this country great again. That's why he's got my full backing. And by the way, that means your full backing. I began to support Trump early on because I knew Hillary would be the nominee. And I said, I hope I'm right. But my gut tells me I'm going in the right direction. It's never been wrong. And I tell you, a lot of you that haven't supported Trump are going to feel really stupid. And I think there's about a 50% chance they're going to kill him. And so when they blow his plane up or shoot him in front of everybody, those of you that were, you know, going, oh, I'm the purest, I'm for Ted Cruz. Oh, I'm the purest, I'm for all this bull. Ted Cruz is bought and paid for by Goldman Sachs and bought and paid for by the Bushes, and it's been proven. And I held my nose and hoped he'd just gotten, you know, basically incubated by them, but had woken up. But because the Bush name is dead now, politically, I'm telling you, he would be their third term. And I don't want to dislike Ted Cruz. But the guy is a phony. He's, he's a phony Texan. And I get really irritated by guys with lizard skin boots and cowboy hats sticking their fingers in their pockets and walking around going, oh, I'm a cowboy. You ain't going there, there. I mean, it makes me sick. The guy's all hat and no cattle. And I'm not getting off into a fight about Cruz. But, but, but Trump has issued the, the, the olive branch to Cruz. He's been sneaking around behind the scenes, and it's his people and a bunch of fake people in cowboy hats wearing Texas shirts who make me want to throw up. And it's a Texas coalition of carpetbaggers from Texas. Boy, isn't that reverse psychology? That's what's going on. A bunch of fake Texans up here uh, in Cleveland you know, degrading my state, degrading my heritage with this phony Canadian. Nothing against Canadians, but my God, I'm not up there trying to run your country. He's like Schwarzenegger. Even if I like Schwarzenegger, which I don't, the guy's not from here, man. Dude, go to Austria and run for president. Polls show you'd win. I mean, go to your country, go to your homeland. But he's an open borders you know, guy anyways, and anti-gun. What I'm getting at is the, the reign of fake conservatives is coming to an end. Donald Trump, Matt Drudge, Alex Jones, we all herald the end of this. And I want to give credit where credit's due. <sighs> Even mainstream media says, okay, Matt Drudge is the only guy that probably could have stopped Trump. Well, that's right. The grassroots could have stopped Trump. That's why uh, we were reached out to very early on by the Trump people when I was already supporting it. It was because they understood that. And I'm going to leave it at that. But it is important for the Trump people to not let the rhinos that are left in the party Keep people out of the tent that built the tent, like Ted Nugent. By the way, Ted Nugent doesn't need to be at this RNC. But it's pure baloney that he wanted to be here early on, and they just said, no, you're too radical. Not Trump, but the RNC. And Ted Nugent's too cool of a guy to sit there and go bitch and complain to Donald Trump, who he knows. Uh, but again, this is, this is how this stuff operates. This is how they get things done. And, I, and, I, and I'm sitting here on Business Insider it says, David Duke, former KKK Grand Wizard, he's with Trump. Are you? 
I mean, that is, well, you've got a grand dragon out in California for Hillary. Does that mean that, you know, that she's for the KKK? Well, in her case, actually, she is. That's who she got tootled by uh, was Senator Robert Byrd, who was actually a real grand dragon. But, but going deeper into this article, it's a larger issue than just Drudge. You read the article and it says, oh, my gosh, Drudge gave an interview, an exclusive, when he doesn't give them but every few years, to Infowars.com. He's so horrible. And it's got Glenn Beck criticizing Drudge here. And then they don't even give you a link to the Drudge 45-minute interview. They have Glenn Beck popping off in the article. So we're going to take their headline. We're going to post it, but point out that they didn't let you actually hear what Drudge had to say. So here's the 45-minute interview if you actually want to know what's going on. So all the general tactics, and I'm not even really attacking this article. It's written kind of from both sides schizophrenically. But it's got the classic Benedict Arnold in here of Glenn Beck saying, I don't know what the hell happened to Matt Drudge, echoed Beck, the prominent conservative talk show host who supports Hillary Clinton, I should add, and founder of the Blaze. And then it goes on to have Cruz, you know, also attacking Drudge previously, but then not actually letting you hear what Drudge has to say. Drudge is going with the populist. Drudge is going with Americana. Drudge is going with the future. Drudge is, 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 in fact, not just going, he's leading it because he is a populist, a nationalist, a true libertarian conservative, just like I am. And so he's helping lead the future, not a coward, not someone who's neutral or beyond neutral. There are things far worse than the neutral Rand Paul, somewhat neutral. No, no, we've got the Glenn Beck who's been going on the Sunday news shows with Democratic Party operatives and bad mouthing. I'm going to play this clip when we come back. Bad mouthing Trump and saying he supports Hillary Clinton. And the host of it, former Democratic Party operative, said he was, quote, speechless. Speechless while he was hearing this. And even the White House run Media Matters came out and said, He's trying to rebrand himself as mainstream and join us. And then they say, we don't want you, Glenn Beck. The White House run. Media matters. So you run to Zuckerberg and grovel at his feet and say his censorship of libertarians and conservatives is good and, and, and worth it and, and, and the thing you should be doing. You run to the, meet the press run by the former, what is it, White House chief. Uh, who, who was Todd? I forget. I mean, it's just, it's totally crazy town. You run to the enemy because you were always the enemy. And I told everyone you were the enemy. But let me tell you what it means that Glenn Beck's doing this. <sighs> I have been told this by the highest levels of folks under Roger Ailes. They've got a big fake scandal brewing that's being run by the Rupert Murdoch kids with ancient fake sexual harassment garbage on Roger Ailes. By the way, Roger Ailes never done anything. We're going to skip this network break. Roger Ailes has never done anything for me. Um... I have been offered Fox shows and have refused them. Man cows on record. I've been offered contracts three different times. They can't believe I won't do weekend shows. So here's the deal. I'm not saying this about, about um, Roger Ailes because I want to get, get any type of entree into Fox. Fox is a sinking island. Fox is meant to be destroyed by the Rupert Murdoch children as soon as they get Ailes out of the way and... Uh, Rupert Murdoch is fading into the oblivion, okay? And they plan to bring down Ailes by the end of this year with a made-up sexual harassment string of women, totally made up from our sources. Some of this stuff's 20 years old when he founded Fox News. And then they plan to basically turn it into a Democratic Party socialist channel. They know the demographics. Most of their viewers are dying. They know that their, their, their other companies that are 95% of what they do uh, are in globalist media, anti-family media, anti-gun media. I mean, look at what News Corp and, 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 the, and the Fox uh, studios put out. Globalist disinformation. They are preparing to turn Fox into a CNN light that they think will still keep the conservative audience that's left because where do they have to go? And that's why Glenn Beck who is arch enemies with Roger Ailes, the two are obsessed with each other, is now going out and showing his wares on ABC and, and CBS and all the rest, uh, sabotaging the libertarian move to block the globalist destruction of the republic. 
here at the final moment, he shows himself to be the Benedict Arnold. So it's, this isn't about the loser, the fake, the actor Glenn Beck. This is about the fact that this is a larger move to take over talk radio, which they're already doing, and shutting down True Patriot host. This is a larger move to kick them all off Sirius XM. It is a larger move, uh, ladies and gentlemen, on every stinking front there is to shut down free speech in this country. And Matt Drudge came a year ago to the InfoWars studios, or I guess a little less than a year ago. And he came to the studios and he warned people, I met with the Supreme Court justice, they're coming out to free speech next year. And you notice it's all here. And then Business Insider will let us hear what Ted Cruz had to say, what Glenn Beck had to say, what a bunch of other people had to say, but won't let you actually hear. I mean, they say he doesn't give interviews but every couple of years, and he gave an interview to this crazy person, Alex Jones, but they won't let you hear what he actually had to say. But here's what happened. I've been to a bunch of different dinners and things and have been mobbed by even mainstream major newspaper writers. So the New York Times... Uh, Weekly Standard, the list goes on and on. And all they ask about is Matt Drudge, and how do you know Matt Drudge? And I say, I'm just really not going to make any comments. But he listens to the show some and uh, links to a lot of our stories and is a trailblazer and came to visit me and was a surprise. They go, is that really a surprise? I said, no, that was really a surprise. Oh, yeah, all right, you staged that. No, it's not, you know. Oh, you just, rec you just recanted to me that you're really a libertarian. And that's all fake. You know, just weird stuff like that. Uh, so that was, and, and, and folks were overall nice, but it's just crazy to see this. And then everybody wants this Drudge interview, but no one will actually link to it. But, but what's beautiful about what he's done is, whether it was the New York Times or whether it was the Weekly Standard or whether it was Politico or whether it was the Washington Post or whether it was all these different groups I talked to. I mean, I'm talking, I mean, it was so much my head was spinning. To a person, they all think the Matt Drudge interview happened last month. Because <laughs> it took that long to start going more and more viral because nobody can get a Matt Drudge interview. So Matt is so smart. He goes and does this one interview, and, in, and then a year wants to know what Matt Drudge thinks, and all they can go to is hear what he said a year ago. So no matter how much they try to ignore it, I see, I don't think like that. He really is smart. We're all smart in different ways, but you can see Matt Drudge has this long-term vision. And so this is not the Matt Drudge butt-kissing contest. It's just really great to see what the stuff he does kind of work his magic down the road. Because my brain works different ways than that. You know, I've got my own smarts in different ways and things. Kind of the smarts of a pit bull attacking a, you know, a zebra, biting it on the nose, but or, or a donkey. <laughs> uh, you know, Democrat analogy here. But it's crazy to see this, and it's crazy to see them try to block everything and try to restrict and try to spin and try to act like they control the narrative and that, you know, the populist movement's a joke. When I talk to these reporters, they are scared. They are listening. I talked to John Ronson, who's a really smart guy and you know, a, a big filmmaker as well. And I've known him for 16, no, actually 17 years, no, 18 years. I mean, three years before I went into Bohemian Grove and no, two years. And he said, no, absolutely. He said, you know, he, he's a big guardian writer. He said, I'm not just telling you this. He said, your libertarian brand in Europe is the hottest thing, hottest thing, you know, here in the U.S. It looks like you and Drudge and Trump are about to become the establishment. And I said, no, we're not. We're about to try to turn the people loose and show the power of populism. We're only focal points of that. But it really is amazing. And so, yes, I would have to give Matt Drudge the credit. First, the American people and populists seeing through things. Then Matt Drudge and, and then myself the credit for early on supporting Trump when it, when it became clear that he was a populist and it was it was going to be Hillary uh, if we didn't if we didn't do something. Uh, but speaking of that, we've got uh, several several different clips here uh, that we're going to play as we go out to break. Let's play one, the first clip of uh, Glenn Beck uh, on Meet the Press, savaging Donald Trump. And remember, this means supporting Hillary Clinton. Uh, here it is. Then you have Donald Trump who the only advisors that he listens to are his children. Um, what do you have? He's a corrupt businessman. She's corrupt. So both sides are now saying, what are you going to do? <coughs> I think we feel all Americans, I shouldn't say all, I think Reince and a few others, uh, you know, at both conventions are going to be fine just pulling the lever. Um, but I think a lot of people are pulling it, not holding their nose, 
uh, wincing in pain as yeah. they think about pulling that lever. So what you decide to do is your is your own business. But I, I have to tell you, there are there are choices. You you can vote for the Green Party. You can vote for the Libertarian Party. Uh, and, and I know and people will say, well, that's a that's a vote for the other guy. But you know yeah. what? Uh, I, I can't sell my soul anymore to these parties because let me ask. So, so or, all right. So, so he can't sell his soul anymore to these other parties. And he tries to spin it like voting for someone else isn't a vote for Hillary, trying to manipulate people, trying. I mean, I know folks that know Glenn Beck, okay? He scripts everything he says. He's the opposite of me. And I am so proud that he's the opposite of me. I am so proud that I am not. And listen, I have held my tongue on Glenn Beck for so long, but that guy has really sabotaged me. He's gotten in my business. And let me tell you something. I thank good Lord above. I thank my family. I think I think Matt Drudge uh, and, and, and also folks like George Norrie that have helped get the info or over to the next level because they've helped me in my life because I'm not really a competitive guy. I'm not out to be the big guy. I'm not out to be the winner. But let me tell you, when somebody tries to, to ruin me and break me and shut me down and destroy me, I do savor it. I'll tell you, I absolutely savor and I enjoy, and anytime I'm down or I'm tired, I can think about all the people in my life, from the bullies when I was 10 years old, right through the, some of the people that fired me off radio because I was talking about Hillary and Bill, right through to people like Glenn Beck and everybody else. You're not going to shut me down, and I'm not backing down, and neither are the American people, and neither is Donald Trump, and neither is Matt Drudge. We're taking this country back. Stay with us. It is crazy to be here in Cleveland. Uh, it is amazing. I have had probably half the police we walk by say, Alex Jones, Alex Jones, give me thumbs up. I have had maybe 20% of the Secret Service uh, wave at me or give me thumbs up. It is crazy. It is crazy. And again, that's got to freak the criminals, the globalists out, that, that Obama and, and Soros' attempt to start a civil war to intimidate the police into giving in to the globalist has absolutely backfired. Our news director, who has been working his butt off at a level I've never seen, he's such a hard worker. Rob Dew is here with us. We got Wayne Madsen from inside the, the, the RNC, where they're set to try to steal it again tomorrow night. I'm going to be going inside tonight and tomorrow, right through when Trump uh, gets the nomination. We're going to be talking about those dirty tricks in the next segment. But I tell you, do have you ever seen so many listeners, not just delegates that have come here or, 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 or Republicans, the locals, yeah. especially the black folks. Yeah. I mean, it just, it's so crazy that black folks love me so much. And then the media, and again, it's not about us, but, but it, it's a benchmark. It's a gauge. The media can spin the idea that it's us against them. Alex, just a quick story. When I was, I was shooting uh, from the tripod position way in the back for your speech yesterday, and when I was packing stuff up, Listeners of all types. Wouldn't you say about a third of the people were black, though? Oh, yeah, yeah. But And, and the black folks were coming up to me going, they knew who I was. They're like, Rob, do thank you, thank you. And they wanted to take pictures with me. I've never had that happen before with so many people in just one location. And they were all, some of them had shirts on, some of them didn't. But they were all like, oh, thank you for what you But it doing. wasn't just people the rally. Really it, 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 it's yeah. very humbling to have folks looking at you like, like you're gonna save them. Look, I'm just like you. I'm fighting tyranny. You're oh, just as powerful. People as People stop me in the streets. They know who I am. I saw. I met a guy last night, a delegate, a California delegate, at midnight, walking down the road. He goes, "Hey, you're with Infowars." I said, "Yeah. Hey, what happened today? Give me your your take of what happened today." And he started talking. He's like, "Yeah, that's right. It's not about us. We uh, we're only telling you because you you aren't known. You're not a public figure. Most of you, you don't get to understand how big the Liberty Movement is. Yeah, it I, is. I mean, it is. I mean, I can barely walk down the street anywhere." Yeah, no, you you get mobbed. Like it's 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 on another level with you. I want to go out but, and just show that. I want to show yeah. people that because because we are the future, and, and this whole mainstream media is about making us feel like we're alone. They right. have these articles every day chastising Drudge for being associated with Trump and myself as he rises and they fall, and then Drudge links to it because he knows it's a joke. Yeah, I mean these people just don't get it, man. <laughs> yeah, I tell it, you, we really are turning the tide. We definitely are. We got a long way to go, but we're turning it. It is, and and with the banner flights that breaking through the mainstream media, we got the trucks going. I mean, it's all that was really in happening. hundreds. Of, yeah. I mean, a publication. Yeah, everybody was talking about it. It was the only because there was nothing else going on for two days. It was just people standing around going, "Ooh, you know, oh my God, there's a ban people are flying banners around." And see, people ask that ought to scare the globalists if Infowars and Drudge just websites, yeah, which tiny crews compared to the mainstream media can kick their butt. It's because you're pushing BS. Well, and it's because we're not caught up in this this giant hierarchy either. It's like, hey, we want to go do this, boom, we do it. We want to go do this, boom, we do it. There's no like, 
We just go where the action is. And that's the difference, I think, with a lot of these mainstream media. They're stuck in their one Can you believe that, that they kept uh, Ted Nugent from speaking here? It's ridiculous. Ted, you know, and they had the Duck Dynasty guy on last night. He, how is he any different from Ted Nugent? They had uh, Scott Bayo, Chachi. I mean, they're getting all these celebrities. What's wrong with Ted Nugent? He's, you know, the because he's, he's, he's too good. <laughs> yeah. And again, that's not Trump's fault. That's no. not, it's not Trump's people. It's the RNC. Of course. That's all. Anytime we run into the, and it's funny, when you meet an InfoWars person who's a delegate, they have a different mindset than one of these RNC people who are just oblivious to, like, what's going on in the world. Well, I mean, I flew up here with, with a bunch of delegates that were with Karl Rove, and I mean, he had them bringing them on the plane. They were, like, Wait, literally bugging their eyes out like they wanted to kill name. me. Call him by his real name. Turd Blossom. Yeah. I mean, they were really, and, I certain, and that's why I said, that's it. I'm getting off the plane. I'm really confronting him now. You know, yeah. uh, the gloves are off, man. That face when he turns and looks at you, it's like this this Dan Aykroyd movie. I think it's called Nothing But Trouble. He looked exactly like that guy from Central Casting, just big and pustule and just uh, and had no soul in his eyes. He looked like he was wearing it was somebody else inside. Well, this is person. the guy that sabotages the Republican Party. Yeah. And and he's done. Oh, yeah. He's, he's a footnote at this point. All right. I'm going to come back, but I want you to ride shotgun with me a little bit because we've got Wayne Madsen and uh, the rest of the crew inside. If we can give people a video shot of our TV viewers, InfoWars.com forward slash show. I skipped a break last hour. I didn't plug last hour. When you folks go to InfoWarsStore.com and, and, and the videos, the books, the articles, that's how we find And here we are above the RNC, above the conference center where they are meeting. And I've got Rob Dew, our news director, sitting right beside me. A lot of amazing things going on. I do intend at the bottom of the hour to open the phones up uh, for everybody. There is a key report up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com from Wayne Madsen. And I've asked uh, Paul Watson to actually write an article about this. It's, it's, it's really a big deal. Now, this isn't about tooting my horn, but I want folks to realize I know what I'm talking about. When the Republicans a few months ago said, okay, we're not going to challenge Trump anymore for the nomination, I said, guaranteed, I know Glenn Beck, and I know uh, the other carpetbagger uh, that's down in Texas. I mean, I'm nothing against Northerners that come south. I love folks, but a, a carpetbagger comes down here to take advantage of Texans, take advantage of our looks, our cowboy hats, our culture, people thinking you know, that you can, quote, trust a Texan. Well, if you can find a real one, yeah, you can. Handshake deal, because you break it, they'll come after you. Uh, but... Uh, we're talking about Ted Cruz, you know, the Canadian. Sure enough, they tried to overthrow the votes, force it down, take the votes, and try to install Ted Cruz. That failed yesterday. Now, the word is, and, and, and Wayne Madsen, investigative journalist, former uh, head of a major security division of the National Security Agency, uh, first major NSA whistleblower 20 years ago, uh, he was on the ground uh, with uh, Kit Daniels and our crew, and he's there right now with Josh Owens, inside uh, the Quicken Loan Center, and he discovered they're planning Wednesday night after Ted Cruz speaks to try to walk out. Donald Trump doesn't need to send his people in to talk to the Cruz former delegates and say, please don't do this. Follow your pledge and, and follow the popular vote. He needs to tell Ted Cruz, we're just going to take you off the speaking slot, you bastard, because I've had enough of this, Okay. And it makes me sick that I ever halfway supported Ted Cruz. Enough dirty tricks. I mean, Glenn Beck is on Meet the Press and other shows saying vote for Hillary. I cannot handle this anymore. Listen, the bad Donald Trump, if you believe the worst stuff about him, he's 50 times better than Hillary. The guy's got courage. He's got honor. He loves America. He wants to have better trade deals. He's pro-Second Amendment. He's pro-family. And then he's even liberal on some subjects that I'm somewhat liberal on. I'm a libertarian. Leave people alone in their bedrooms. He's a great candidate, and he's a unifier. He's from the North, you know, where America started. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's just exciting to see him bringing America together as a great unifier. If they let him in, he'll be the new Ronald Reagan, and I think more so. And I'm so excited about it. Listen, Wayne Madsen is somebody I'd call a you know, famous journalist. I would call him kind of a classical liberal, libertarian liberal. Uh, he's been supporting uh, uh, Trump. I don't I think of a time I've seen him support a Republican. Uh, he's kind of not really supported Democrats either, but I, I don't want to speak for him. But before we get into what happened last night, was coming up tomorrow night that we're breaking here. Wayne Madsen inside the convention center uh, for TV viewers, Infowars.com forward slash show. Radio listeners can go find the feed right there. Uh, but this will also be archived later, later today. Let's first talk about you transformatively. Am I speaking for you or do you support Trump? And then uh, why are you supporting him? And then what happened last night? What's happening tomorrow? 
Well, Alex, what uh, has happened here so far is yesterday there was an attempt uh, to uh, have the rules uh, altered to go for a full roll call vote, and that failed. Uh, that was being pushed primarily by Senator Mike Lee, a Cruz uh, delegate from Utah, and uh, the former Attorney General of Virginia, Ken Cuccinelli. Uh, that, as I said, that failed because uh, the chair, Pre uh, Rince Priebus, said you have to have a certain number of states and a certain number of signatures to go for a full roll call vote. Uh, the Cruz people said, no, they cried foul. They said, look, uh, th this is a ruling uh, that, you know, they, they used the word thugs uh, describing the, uh, the RNC. They weren't happy. Now, last night, uh, what I discovered was uh, from a senior delegate from Tennessee, who was a Trump delegate, said, look, there's a rumor that the uh, Cruz people will stage a walkout after Ted Cruz's speech tomorrow evening. Uh, we, we spoke to the Texas uh, Cruz people. They said, look, we're hoping to vote for our person Cruz, but then uh, when Trump gets the nomination, we will support Trump. Now, what's going to happen tonight after the gavel goes down is uh, we're going to have the nomination process for president and then for vice president, but they're going to uh, start the roll call with Alabama, uh, and it goes in alphabetical order, and at some point in time, and I, 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 this is a very unconventional convention, but usually the uh, presidential candidate's home state uh, moves for uh, uh, nomination by acclamation. So they don't go through the entire roll call. This is what the Cruz people wanted. They wanted the chance for Texas, which is at the end of the alphabet, to be able to, be able to vote along with Utah. <coughs> Excuse me. So... Um, I, I would say that at some point in time uh, during the roll call, uh, I, I, my suspicion is the, the New York, which is Trump's home state, uh, their, their delegation chair will move for acclamation so it won't go to further states. Now, Wayne, let me throw this in at you. Uh, I got something to add to that, too. Absolutely. Uh, again, Rob DeHere with us, InfoWars News Director. Let me ask you this question. Clearly, this is about just sabotaging Trump, making it look like he's not even supported by his own party to damage him and support Hillary. I mean, I cannot believe these Republicans, after their attempt to claim that they were super delegates and that votes didn't count, they were repudiated. They had to back off. This is very traitorous, very treacherous, very dishonorable. Do these people have any idea uh, how dirty this is, A, and then B, uh, you know, clearly this is going to blow up in their face and it's not going to succeed. And, and then how are they going to feel when Hillary gets elected? Well, I mean, uh, I, I don't think many of the people here would vote for Hillary Clinton. Uh, this is a uh, fair, uh, fairly... Then why are they trying to sabotage Trump? Because, I mean, nobody else is going to get it. Right. They, they've tried to do that. Uh, but uh, I think when it comes down to November, we're talking about a Republican, at least the ones represented here, the Republicans... Uh, I don't think many will sit at home uh, and, and like want to sacrifice their vote if they think that Hillary Clinton could be elected president. There may be some, certainly. We don't even have the governor of Ohio here, and he's, they spent $54 million to get this convention in Cleveland. And uh, they're not going to make that back by hot dog sales from the concourse here. You don't have Kasich here. He's in Cleveland, uh, but he's, uh, he's attending side meetings. Uh, I, and that's I, another uh, reason I'm supporting Trump. You have all the old, disgusting rhinos, the Bushes, the old establishment, just like the Clintons, fighting with everything they've got. It's a no-brainer. Let me ask you this. I know you don't want to get into your own personal views, but I've seen you on air. I mean, I mean, you've. Uh, what is your real view of Trump? Uh, I mean, you know, you're here obviously exposing the fact you're trying to take him out. What is your view of this general election? What's your view of Trump? Well, I think what we see with Trump and, and on the other side, Bernie Sanders, is there is anger across the country. Nobody will de uh, deny that fact. And uh, you, you, know, you can sense the anger here amongst a lot of the delegates. I've spoken to them. They, they don't like uh, the, uh, the way the country has gone for the last eight years under Barack Obama. And they look at Hillary as just a continuation of the Obama administration. Some actually believe she might be worse. Uh, so I think what we're, uh, what we're seeing is, is the anger playing out. And I think we're going to see the same attempt in Philadelphia by Sanders people to do exactly what the Cruz people did here uh, to, to try to say, even though Trump, of course, was not the favorite of the uh, uh, Republican uh, establishment, 
So this is, uh, as, I, as I've written, uh, anyone who has the old rule book, political rule book from the last century needs to throw it away. It doesn't work anymore. That's right. This is a major political realignment. Wayne, is this one of the biggest realignments in your historical re research that we've seen since the founding of the republic? Well, Alex, I've actually never seen a convention like this uh, where you've got uh, the only previous GOP nominee for president, Bob Dole, uh, was here. Uh, all the others are boycotting. John McCain, Mitt Romney, uh, none of the Bushes are here. But uh, as, as you know uh, from your flight here, the Bushes have their surrogate here working behind the scenes, and that's Karl Rove. And I talked to a uh, former Republican congressman last night from Ohio, and it, it was his feeling that Rove is here to basically uh, be the uh, Bush henchman here to see what he can possibly do to disrupt the convention for Trump. And um, so there's a good that, chance that Rove is behind some of this uh, attempt to uh, embarrass Trump. He may be. Um, the uh, the issue with uh, you've got um, rumors that Mitt Romney's in town, too, although nobody's seen him. We know Kasich's here. As you know, Rove is here. So, yeah, there is some. Behind. Well, that's my, extremely my... shameful. That's extremely shameful. I want to come back to you after the break. But real quick, Rob, do you got a question or point? Well, uh, I just want to confirm what um, would uh, da okay. Wayne Madsen was just saying. The, the delegate I talked to from California last night said it was all cruise states and Marco Rubio people getting together in one side of the convention floor. They were all colluding and he was witnessing this happening. And, and when they called for that roll call, he actually stood up and said something to the chair at that point saying, no, we should not allow this. And that's when they, they Look, at this right point, there. those are Hillary operatives yeah. in the convention trying to spoil the will of popular voters. This is election fraud that we're watching here, okay? And that video is up. You can watch this whole the old interview. It's on uh, the Alex Jones channel. It's called California Delegate Exposes How Never Trump is Going to Fail because he basically said Trump's got it in the bag. They will not be able to steal it from him. But we'll see. We still have to maintain vigilance at this sure. point. Well, because they're, they can they're, do they're bare minimum time. trying to embarrass him, aren't they, right. Wayne? I'm sorry? They're bare minimum trying to embarrass Trump. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, as, you know, the, the issue with this convention so far has been we haven't even seen a schedule with timed events. Uh, we, we first saw the first schedule with any times given what came out yesterday. But uh, unlike many other conventions where you got people slotted in certain times, we haven't seen that. So there's a lot of play going on at this convention uh, and we see a lot of to be determined speakers still on the list That's right unprecedented let's talk about the other intel you've gleaned the last few days inside uh, the convention center we're day two we're right above the convention center broadcasting live wayne madsen and our crew is inside we've got crew on the streets out there talking to the blm groups and other soros funded trash it's all coming up straight ahead and we've got a religion of peace jihadi killing people with an axe in germany and we're hearing now it's the germans fault stay with us Welcome to your life. There's no turning back. We've got the Republican establishment, the Bushes, Glenn Beck, Ted Cruz trying to sabotage the people's popular vote. Stop stop uh, Donald Trump. I mean, my God, that's incredible. And we've got the people really waking up. But coming up, i got a short interview with the Dash D'Souza that Leanne McAdoo did last night. Uh, and then we've uh, also got D'Souza coming on tomorrow. We've got Ted Nugent, a lot more. And we're going to be talking to Leanne McAdoo and Margaret Howell out on the street that are interviewing folks. Uh, Joe Biggs is also going to the convention center. I'm going to be in there later tonight and, of course, tomorrow when they attempt this big uh, walkout. And I also uh, saw two guys wearing new Black Panther Party shirts. They saw me looking them out the window. I stopped at the red light, jumped out, and actually ran the building away from me. I just want to go talk to them and say, hey, you know George Soros is funding all this. Try to cause a war in this country. It's not going to help anybody. Uh, so I'm going to go out and talk to some of those folks if I'm able to. We are on the lookout. We are on the hunt, uh, as they say. Rob News here with News Director He's going to be in Philadelphia with David Nine and others. But right now, let's go back to Wayne Madsen on the floor. What else have you gleaned, Wayne, and what else are you looking uh, to happen? What's the next shoe to drop? Well, uh, tonight we'll actually see the Republican establishment on stage, scheduled to uh, speak as the ex officio um, uh, chairman of the convention, uh, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan. And uh, also speaking will be the Senate Majority Leader, Senator Mitch McConnell. So it'll be very interesting uh, because n neither one of them have given what I would call full-throated endorsements of Donald Trump. So it'll be very interesting to see what they have to say uh, tonight uh, uh, when they uh, are up there on this uh, podium behind me. Uh, 
we also have some uh, members of the uh, Trump family. Uh, Donald Trump Jr. is scheduled to speak, uh, and uh, there'll be some other uh, Republican politicians on stage. But uh, unlike uh, past uh, conventions, uh, Republican conventions in this case, we don't see a lot of the uh, uh, big office holders. Uh, there is a few here. Scott Walker is scheduled to speak uh, here. Uh, the governor of Wisconsin. Isn't uh, that for you an endorsement of Trump? I mean, I know you've kind of dodged this twice. I'm not mad that you have, but just as a private citizen, uh, I mean, what is your view of Trump? Well, I think he's uh, on, on many issues. Uh, he's the anti-neocon, for one thing. Uh, on foreign policy, uh, he's their worst nightmare. He wants to patch up our relations with Russia, uh, which the neocons are dead set against. Uh, he's against these uh, trade agreements. Uh, he he thinks that uh, we should have left Saddam Hussein uh, in power in Iraq and thinks it's awful that we're trying to overthrow Assad in Syria because he sees them as uh, stabilizing influences. Uh, so uh, I, I see a lot of people who have uh, voted Democratic in the past taking a close look at Donald Trump because foreign policy issues, uh, trade issues, bringing uh, manufacturing jobs back to the United States. And you, you can just walk a few blocks from this convention center and you see uh, empty factories. Uh, Cleveland was once a huge manufacturing city and that's all been lost. Although I gotta admit, they've done a pretty good job at refurbishing the uh, uh, center city here in Cleveland. Yeah, they made the downtown look better, but you go outside of here, it, it, it looks like a war zone, but a lot of great people here and we can rebuild this country. Uh, what do you think happens if he does lose? How do they put this political dead duck Hillary in power? If she doesn't go for full dictatorial power, she's going to be removed pretty quickly. Well, I, I believe what we're seeing with Kasich in town and ru the rumored uh, presence of Mitt Romney and people like Rove, uh, I think they're looking at 2020. Uh, they want to try to get this party back under their control. Uh, they're, uh, they're going through. Remember, they, after the last election, they did this uh, post-mortem. Uh, this autopsy on the Republican Party, and then their worst nightmare uh, occurred because they lost total control over the party with the nomination of an outsider. They're going to try in for 2020 to get it back under the control of the insiders, and I think that's what they're meeting probably in uh, one of these hotel suites downtown, planning really for 2020. Uh, I believe that these Republicans are already uh, conceding uh, the November election to Hillary Clinton. Wow, and then working with, with, with Beck and everybody else to make sure that happens uh, as loyal opposition for the Democrats inside. And so that lets us know if Trump gets elected, the battle just begins, as we'll have the Democrats and Republican establishment trying to sabotage him at every turn. So we can't just get him in office and then leave him there. We've got to support him. That's right. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I, I think the, the one thing uh, with the, the schedule being so fluid, uh, normally those schedules are hammered out way in advance because people you know are traveling and whatnot so what and, does that uh, mean to you see, what does that mean to you what does that signify it means that this is uh, really this is the most unorganized convention that i've covered and i've seen uh, uh in recent times maybe well, in a way that's good I mean, uh, yeah i mean in a way that's that's how the first ones were and that's what freedom looks like it's not just some top-down centralized system i know you're filing more reports you're doing a great job uh, so Wayne Madsen of WayneMadsenReport.com works with InfoWars.com. Thanks for being a correspondent for us. We'll be back with our folks on the street. Stay with us. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. we're here. Then returning weeknight 7 o'clock Central, InfoWars Nightly News. And then, of course, Sundays 4 to 6 p.m. Central with a live Sunday broadcast. I'm your host, Alex Jones, coming to you from deep in the heart of Cleveland, Ohio, site of the 2016 Republican National Convention. Back at the home base in Austin, Texas, we have David Knight and the rest of the great crew making this all possible. But I've got nine or ten people here in our crew. I guess more than that, actually, about 11. And so we've got a full court press here with our operation. We've been dominating coverage. Hundreds of newspapers, hundreds of TV stations, all over national news, promoting liberty, warning people about globalism, showing that if somebody just gives the New World Order a stand-up fight, we kick their butts. Very, very exciting time to be alive right now. Looking at this, uh, it really shows that you can only have a globalist takeover, a multinational corporate takeover of your country, when the people aren't aware of what's happening. That's why you've got to control the media. 
And the globalist mainstream media was arrogant when the Internet first came into being. They thought it would be a tool of surveillance, a tool of control. They thought that they could basically dominate it. But it's shown the genie's out of the bottle. Now they've hit the panic button. They admit, we're going to have Joe Biggs on in a little while with us. They admit that they're having major, major problems and that everything's unraveling. So now they want censorship. Now they want control. Uh, now they want to be able to uh, just basically shut us down. It, it doesn't work to call us racist and all this garbage. And that's why it's more important than ever. I, I, I haven't even plugged yet any of the products or things that fund this operation. First off, I want to thank you for being supporters. I want to let you know that we give you the very best products, the very lowest prices we possibly can. And I want to encourage you from the bottom of my heart to continue to spread the word. It's really having a big effect. History's happening. And to take advantage of the nutraceuticals, whether it be lung cleanse or brain force or DNA force uh, or super male vitality or child ease uh, or any of these amazing products, check them out. They've changed my life. Just our sleep formula is an example of our philosophy. It's nine different ingredients. Just this dose of melatonin on average is $15 to $19 a bottle of the same dose, same quality. Ours is $19.95. It has the same regular dose of melatonin. Then it has L-tryptophan. Then it has valerian root, chamomile. It goes on and on. To get this, it'd be 50 bucks at a discount store for all these different compounds in one big pill. Safe, healthy, relaxing sleep. It's amazing. Infowarslife.com, $19.95. Uh, we're running 25% off on DNA Force. That will end today because it's going to sell out. And so that will end by tomorrow because I have to hold back some bottles for folks that sign up for auto ship. Uh, they get 10% off. So we always have to hold some back for folks that are already signed up for auto ship or those that may. Uh, it'll be about a month till we get more DNA Force in. It's 25% off. It's the top nutraceutical out there, proven to have growth. Uh, Nerve, growth factor, I mean, just stuff, telomeres, you name it. DNA Force is amazing. Take advantage of that. I want to thank you all for your support. Hillary for Prison shirts are nineteen ninety five. We've been selling them as low as $5 because I want to get tens of thousands of them out there. There's like 80,000 of them now out there or something. They're all over the country. It's one of the top memes in the nation. But at nineteen ninety five, we can take all the proceeds and pay for aircraft in the skies. You've seen that be national news. You've seen that be the top meme in the country. It's amazing. We're leading the way on how to resist. We're ragtag, we're cross-eyed and exhausted half the time, but we've got the passion, we're going over the top. Infowarsstore.com is the umbrella site. Infowarslife.com is the nutraceuticals. You can also call toll-free in order or ask any questions or ask about different discounts. There's a lot of other ones I don't have time to mention. 888-253-3139. 888-253-3139. We're also going to be going out to the Black Panther meetings and more. I'm going to be there. Others are. We're not playing games. We're going to go expose what George Soros is financing and is running. And if a Klan rally pops up, we're going to go cover that as well, though I haven't heard of one of those. The birds of a feather, uh, federal minions, tend to fly together. Uh, Joe Biggs was about to go into the convention center. We saw him down there, and I said, I know he's got something to cover, but I'm going to go, go to some of the protests here in a little while. I thought Biggs might want to be with us, but he can choose what he wants to do. We're going to Leanne uh, McAdoo and, of course, uh, our other great uh, – edition reporter, and that's, of course, Margaret Howell. But first, uh, Joe, what have you seen today so far, and uh, what's going on inside the convention center? I mean, as you can see, the police have pretty much built this entire wall around the center and kept a lot of people back. There's smaller pockets of protests happening, but I think today is going to be one of the largest ones. Cornell West is going to be speaking at 4 p.m. with Carl Dix, the co-founder of the Revolutionary Communist Party, along with the Hugh P. Newton Gun Club and the new Black Panther Party. That's at 4 today. That's at 4 o'clock at the public uh, square down here. And we're going. We need all the Patriots to be there. We're peaceful. We're just coming to cover it. We're coming to talk to them and interview them and hopefully talk some sense into them. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see this large amount of people, these different diverse groups coming together right here with the amount of police, the, the, you know, the nerves are high, the intensity, you know, the helicopters are flying everywhere. I just spoke with one of our uh, guys out on the ground that uh, works closely with the Cleveland Police Department. He's working on trying to get me in one of these police choppers to fly around and uh, get some aerial footage as well today. So it's going to be interesting to see how everything pans out. But I, I guarantee you by Thursday, Thursday is going to be that day where it really gets hot and heavy. People are going to be angry. They've been out in the sun every day. Whatever we find out happens at the end of this week with the RNC convention and all that, I, I think Thursday is going to be our big day. What did you expect coming in, and what have you experienced since you've been here? 
I expected just complete and total chaos. But once you get here and actually see how they've barricaded this place in and really done a good job at keeping these people out and not letting them get close to the area and not to, to bother the delegates trying to go in and out, not really screwing around with people. Cleveland didn't play any games. I mean, they brought in police from all over the country, and it's definitely helping out. But it's definitely it's sad to see when you have the head of the police department here also calling for a temporary ban on our Second Amendment rights. That's something I do have a problem with. That's right. But he also said Obama's basically financing and running Black Lives Matter and did all this. Look, here's the issue. They bring the jihadis in, they attack, we lose our liberties. They got all these communist groups, White House funded, we lose our liberties. No, if we just stand for these unconstitutional groups calling for criminal action, then we'll have an open society again. That's why the globalists have brought all this crime in, is because they want to use it to turn us into this. I, I, I can't believe that so many Americans are upset over this Melania Trump speech and not as angry about this. By the way, I went and looked at it. Everybody says my family's roots and my values. Everybody says that. Yeah, it's a typical, you know, wife speech. I mean, it's... Is borderline. Is she running for president? No. Well, but of course, Obama's been caught plagiarizing whole cloth. But that's okay. Look, look, it's, it's all about a diversion. I agree with you. Stay here a little while, or do you have a meeting we're going to? Inside? No, 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 I'm good. All right, well, we're going to go to now our crew. Joe Biggs is with us. Uh, we've got Leanne McAdoo and Margaret Howell down on the ground. Uh, guys, what have you observed, and, and where do you see all this going? That's right, Alex. We are right here across from the Quicken Loans and here in front of the main media staging area. This is the mass distraction epicenter. This is where they're running interference for the globalists, letting you know that the only thing that you need to care about was Melania's speech and that it was allegedly plagiarized because she used very common words that everyone speaks about, family, you know, building your own wealth. Uh, working hard, you know, the Obamas own that type of speech, apparently. They own the American so, dream as they try to kill it. Absolutely. And of course, let's not forget, Obama was uh, accused of plagiarism in 2008. He, they were accused of taking uh, portions of Hillary Clinton's speeches, and she accused him. He's, he said that was ludicrous. How could, you know, this is a balderdash. I've written two books. No, he didn't. Who wrote your books, Obama? So it's Bill just Ayers. total distraction. Exactly. You know, Saul Alinsky pulled some big quotes out of that book. So it's just mass distraction here. And all of these people here are like true patriots kind of fighting back <laughs> against the, the mass distraction. We've seen so many people out here getting in people's faces, not being afraid of standing up and speaking out, saying why they're voting for Trump. This guy here is doing a great impression of him. And so I'm going to step away because he's quite distracting. Um, I was about to say, is somebody doing a distraction to me? I'm going to drop kick him in a second. <laughs> but here, let's see. Let's let this distractor get in here. Let's let's see what this dumbo is doing. We have to understand that. At first, we have to come. We have to acknowledge that. We have to identify that. And ladies and gentlemen, Roger Stone is going to be my guest any second now, so stay tuned and join us here at the Republican National Convention, all right, because we are going to take our party back, ladies and gentlemen. Too long to globalist people like... Uh, That's a pretty good, uh, pretty... Blossom. Blossom. By the way, every time they do this, just a turd blossom. Bag, the George Bush, but <laughs> Paul Rose. 1776 is going to commence again if you do another Alex Jones impression. I thought that was nothing pretty good. Nothing in there He's like making soda, but believe me, it's going to make you feel real good. They're shooting something as well, so uh, they've got... All right, he's had his 10 seconds of fame. This will be yeah, national news. We've been trolled or whatever. I think it's funny. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's, rolled, he's good, he's good. So uh, um, I know we had a Millie Weaver kind of running around doing some reports for us. She's already reported the fact that there has been an altercation between a, a biker for Trump and uh, an anarchist at one of these parks. She's uh, running over here to get us that footage. So we're already seeing kind of the tensions are high. Um, and, and Joe Biggs kind of brought this up, the, the way that they have everything set up. The protesters are pretty far away from everything, and they're not uh, facing any opposition. So there's no opposing voices, really. It's not like as if they're clashing against each other so really it is you have to show up to these events and challenge them on their ideas i got uh, into a discussion with a young man who was for socialism and then he said ultimately communism that's the big dream and he sat there and tried to tell me that communism didn't kill millions of people and that it's just a wonderful thing and that capitalism is terrible yeah I mean, just look at venezuela i mean you know no whenever you bring that up they're like oh but that's not what we're gonna that's not what we're going to do. That's you know? not what we're going to do when we put you in a forced labor camp and oversee you. We'll be bosses <laughs> then. I tell you, communism is yeah. such a joke. What we got is corporate fascism now using socialism to domesticate us. Uh, Leanne, what did you expect going into this, and what have you experienced so far? Well, 
uh, you know, honestly, I expected that it was going to be a little bit more chaotic, uh, but they really have cordoned off so much of the roads here. They're doing a very good job at making sure you're, you can't access any areas without the proper identification. So a lot of the uh, George Soros groups, we've seen a lot. We're going to be speaking with some of them uh, right after. They're actually standing around waiting to speak with us. But they're all over the place. All of these people who don't even realize that they are working for one of the biggest globalists. Well, I'll uh, tell you what. There. I mean, uh, Margaret can pop it anytime she wants, Leanne, but we can obviously bleep it once, but tell them not to cuss. If they do, we'll have to cut, cut it off. But uh, let's go try to talk to some of these Soros minions right now if you want. Okay. Well, let me uh, – now they're walking this way, so – I understand. Just, just whenever one pops by, we'll talk to him. You know, it's like yeah. that guy yesterday. He was running around, uh, you know, and, and, and I guess he has a show on Cartoon Network. They made a big deal of it that I got the wrong station. Somebody told me he was with Comedy Central. So I said, hey, dude, you're, you know, it's saying something. People are getting mad at you. You come up here and talk. And then he only said was have sex with my wife. Why is PP yeah. yellow? And, and it was like, oh, Alex got defeated by that. No, I was trying to go, here, here's some free speech. And he's mocking Building 7. Yeah, mocking Building 7. I'm just like, come up here, dude. And then people what thought that defeated me when the guy's like he had a lobotomy or something. I mean, I yeah, was illustrating I mean, the embassy. I probably shouldn't admit, admit it, but I manhandled him and pushed him down. Like, who are you? What a loser. That's what you do with your life. That's how you're helping this country. I mean, these people are just sick in the head. I mean, at least some of the people that are out here, even though they're fighting on the wrong team, they're very passionate about what they do, and they're not using their five seconds to talk about utter ludicrousness. That's right. Uh, we're we live in Cleveland. Leanne McAdoo is out there in the 90-degree heat on a beautiful sunny yeah. day. We are up here uh, in the command base, uh, the studio right above the RNC meeting in the Quicken Loans Center. We're going to be in there today as well. We're going to be going to this communist slash George Soros slash Nazi collaborator slash Black Lives Matter slash New Black Panther Party uh, event at 4 o'clock. And, and, and again, Joe Biggs, what park is that? Uh, it's going to be at the Public Square Park right over here around the corner. It's about a block away. All right, well, we're going to be moseying on over there to be able to cover that. Uh, Leanne, have you, have you found any of the Soros uh, minions? I do not see any at the present moment. I do not. Uh, we've got Gunner here, who is really outspoken, um, getting in some confrontations. What do you think about the fact that there are so many young people that want socialism in this country? Well, I think Bernie Sanders really touched a nerve in this country. You know, uh, speaking about issues like student loans, Wall Street, crony capitalism. Why do you roll over then to Hillary? Say, what Bernie yeah. did really well was he, he talked about issues and problems in this country, but he offered the wrong solution. Right. Because the problems that he's been talking about are problems with crony capitalism, problems with the government picking winners and losers. And we, we are the losers. And the people at the bottom, the students, the people who don't have a lot That's of right. money. Free market will make you so damn equation. rich, you're going to be a, you're gonna be a thug, or you're going to be decorated. That's the problem. That problem more is to free up the markets and stay away from socialism. It's a failed experiment. Right. Right. Kind of they, to be on a three-year waiting list for sunglasses. That's the ultimate goal. So it's <laughs> good to have people want. out here countering that. I'll just make a phone call. <laughs> Leanne, I'm sorry. I was listening to you. I was having a conversation over here. Sorry about that. We are. I'm not uh, able to get the feeds kind of coming in and out. But, yeah, I mean, it's just really great to have so many people coming out here to counter these protesters who truly believe what they're telling you, truly this, I mean, this kid truly believed and fought to tell me that communism wasn't killed, killed millions of people, democide. And I said, That's well, a big seven foot kid. And I, I had a guy yesterday tell me that Sharia law was peaceful. Oh yeah, yeah, that guy said Sharia law was peaceful. <laughs> oh, and my some God. folks are saying, see, it is peaceful. Like yeah. that guy with the hatchet, with the axe. Yeah, that, that was very peaceful and loving. Oh yeah, or the <laughs> wow. guy who stabbed his neighbors because they were, weren't were dressing appropriately. So he was obviously having some uh, lascivious thoughts about these young children. And so he stabs them. I mean, but safe and loving, let's open up the borders. Let's not vet anyone. And that's racist. Hey, what matters is Melania Trump said she loved her family and loved America. That's plagiarism. Right. Scandal. I had a girl tell me. I had a girl tell me yesterday that I was on her land. She was about a 23-year-old little socialist punk. She goes, "You're on my my land. I'm a Native American." I was like, "Well, I was born here. I'm a Native American too, and I'm older than you, so I've been on this planet a lot longer than you." And I was like, "I think you're a dumbass." And she's sitting there the whole time looking around. She's going, "Oh, well, now." Then all of a sudden, she switches. She's Mexican, so she starts speaking to me in Spanish, and then into another language. I was like, "I thought you were just Native American. Now you're Mexican." I was like, "Do you want to make uh, America Mexico again?" She's like, "This is not your land." I was like, "Well, guess what happens well, when you lose a war? We take the land." Well, Sorry. Here's what happens. The, 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 nobody. Nobody's, nobody's good or bad on either side. Nobody's bad. The point is, it's a joke. Right? <laughs> They're very bad. Nobody's bad. The point is, is that 
as soon as we got here, the natives were always trying to get us to attack the other tribe. So they were just as warlike as the Europeans. We're all the same. We all do the same kind of crap. We're all good. We're all bad. The, the, you know, it, it's just they teach these kids, you're going to get ahead in the world by being a socialist and being part of a group, and you're owed reparations. Guess what? You're not getting them. Nobody's getting them. The only reparations are getting our jobs back and our industry back. Leanne Magadou. Well, I agree, and that's what one of the things that I really loved about Dinesh D'Souza's movie, he put um, Hillary's America. He really spells it out. So many people who have been brainwashed in these Black Lives Matter cults and everything that are putting out these false narratives, they're only getting one side of history. And so we were speaking with several um, recovering Democrats who had been educated on the real truth of the Democratic Party, their racist roots, their thuggish roots, and just talking about that these are the same tactics that convicts, con men use to steal. That's what they're using to steal America. Exactly, exactly. And, and, and the big old mommy of the Democratic Party with all her little milkies, you know, there with all her little slaves on the fetid poison milk. She can't keep her minions in the dark for life. She can't hide them from the waiting world. We'll be back. Great job, Liam. We'll talk to Margaret Howe and more straight ahead. It's live coverage of RNC from Cleveland 2016. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com. Let me talk about one of the biggest lies ever. Then we're going to pop in with Margaret Howe and Leanne McAdoo again, riding shotgun with us into the next hour. And then, and then I'm going to open the phones up and take your calls. Hi. Richard Reeves is going to be popping in as well. One of the biggest things that hurts my feelings and, and one of the biggest victories of the globalists and the mainstream media is that Ron Paul, back in 2007 or so, along with the Liberty Movement, started the Tea Party. And we would throw 9-11 commission reports into the water and say that 9-11 was a fraud, but also say we're anti-war, but we're more libertarian or conservative. And then that movement built, and then as soon as Obama got in, people were protesting Republicans and Democrats. The Republicans got scared. They came and tried to co-opt the Tea Party. It kind of co-opted them, though. There was an internal battle. But the media would say, minorities aren't welcome. These are racists. And then folks were scared and wouldn't go out to the Tea Party rallies and it became a self-fulfilling prophecy to say, if you're pro-gun or pro-family or pro-private property or pro-sovereignty or pro-Christianity or pro-life, you know, but you're a minority, you're not welcome at the Tea Party or the new Second American Revolution. That's not going on. In fact, now that people of, quote, color have actually been going to Tea Party events the last few years, you go and it's like a third or half of them are because they got everybody's hugging them, everybody loves them. It's like, you know, I mean, you go and it's like Christian patriots, folks. You go, there's a thousand people, there might be one clan guy. I mean, it is amazing. Just like our rally yesterday, had to be about a thousand people, news said 500. I mean, it was like a third African Americans. Or, mm -hmm. it, it, it was just so amazing. But again, the way they sell this really worked for a while. And imagine just you win the revolution if you say anyone who has any color can't be pro gun or pro life or, or pro America or, or, or not want Sharia law. Well, I mean, that's crazy. And that's why they're race baiting. Uh, I mean, Donald Trump is not racist in any way. I mean, I had like NPR and also had uh, Democracy Now! go to me. Do you support Donald Trump banning all Muslims? And I said, yeah, until they're vetted. They don't even check their passports or IDs. They let them in. We don't know the numbers. I have say ban anybody coming in until we vet them. Yep. I mean, that's how it is every other country. So uh, I want to go to uh, Margaret Howe, one of our great reporters out there braving the heat. What is your view of being here three days now, Margaret? <laughs> Alex, we're on the ground, and can I just say, back to that comment you just made about anybody who is African-American supporting Trump as being a racist, I actually found this amazing guy right here, Eric. Look at this Trump, look at this Trump shirt, Alex. And do you, what do you think, sir? You're a, you're a Trump supporter, correct? I am, I am. Can you tell me why? I'm a Trump supporter because people don't listen to his, his views on health care, but he has views on health care, and I like that. They don't listen to his views on the border. What's your real views on the border? He actually says, not all Mexicans. He says Mexican, Mexicans who are unvetted. He Trump's says, not a racist, right? No, no ma'am. No, no ma'am. Ma no, ma'am. No, ma'am. What well, people don't know is that one day Trump got uh, his limousine, right. got pulled over or flat tired, and he then paid that guy's house off and came and helped him out. Nobody knows that. Right. Nobody knows that. Why do you think that the evil liberal left media wants to paint him as a racist? Why, why is that their narrative, do you think? To help Hillary, why not? <laughs> it's easy, why not? They want to help Hillary, why not? Why wouldn't they? Because they want to help Hillary. 
like, look, look at all the movies that come out these days. Who's the heroine? It's all women. I'm, I'm okay with women. I have three daughters. I'm okay with women being heroes, but why are they doing it? It's an agenda, exactly. They're it's like, since when do we have a centralized agenda? This guy gets it. It's an agenda. It's an agenda, yes, ma'am. Have you always felt this way? How long have you been like this? <laughs> how long have I been like, how long have I been away? Oh, okay. How long have you been awake? <laughs> I've been awake for years. For years, okay. Hey, tell him so, stay there. I want to come right back to him, Margaret. He's going to come right back to you, sir. I want you back to hang out. Back in 70 seconds. All right, we're talking to, I'm telling you folks, there are just, there are just people who happen to have dark skin all over Cleveland that are info warriors and Trump supporters. Oh, yeah. I mean, if, the, if we got to go out and show this, because I mean, it, it's in the crowds. It's like a third of the people are black that are here supporting Trump. Extremely passionate. Absolutely. Extremely. And they're totally awake. And more articulate than I am. That guy just said it in like 10 seconds. Right. Like, it's a whole agenda, folks. Centralized BS agenda. Network. All right, uh, listen. I I don't see the feed in live time. I've got InfoWars open with the video feed. It's about a minute behind. I was just talking about how, how many great black Americans, Hispanic Americans there are supporting InfoWars and Trump here. About as many InfoWars as Trump t-shirts. No wonder Trump noticed it. And then all of a sudden, I can't even see her feed yet. She goes, I happen to have a guy right here who wants to talk. You know, who's a black American who's awake. So that's what I'm talking about. It's almost like that was staged. It wasn't staged. It shows how what you see in mainstream media is not the reality of what's going on. And Americans are coming together. And that's a beautiful thing, repudiating the establishment. Margaret, let's go back to your friend and talk to him some more. You know, I, lo I lost him, Alex, but I found some other people that, that really wanted to talk to us that are here today um, on the opposite side of this. We've got a bust up militarism. Are, what's going on, guys? We're here to talk about the endless wars and the fact that the United States is responsible for pet perpetuating all of the violence and extremism that we have in this world. We want to talk about um, cutting our military budget back, reinvesting that money into our communities. What does the bra have to do with it? Can't you do that with a shirt on? Sure. But yeah, it's a clever messaging, right? Bust up. And there you go. You know what? We've got these social justice warriors out in full force. And just quick question. Do you guys know that you're working directly for George Soros? I'm sorry. I'm just saying, like, really against awesome. militarism, if that's what you're talking about. And I think that we need to cut our military budget in order to focus on things at home, like health care. What about Hillary launching all these wars? What about Hillary launching all these wars? Oh, yeah. She is definitely the biggest war hawk running for office right now. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, what about, about Lydia? Um, what what about Trump not wanting to yeah. go to war in Iraq or Afghanistan? Yeah, Trump was against Iraq. She's for it, which. So many. Trump was against Iraq. What do you yeah. say about that? I mean, are you, aren't you a Trump supporter for, for that reason alone? He doesn't want to engage in yes. foreign wars and cost American lives, not to mention the foreign lives. And against Syria. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not a Trump supporter on a single issue alone. I think the hateful rhetoric is going to lead to violence and extremism. We've experienced that in the context of protesting oh, like the alone. Us? What kind of safety hateful can we be guaranteed if somebody rhetoric. at this presidential platform is going to give us? A permission to be violent when it's dissent on the line. You know what, doll? I hear you, but at the same time, you know, if we don't have a strong front, what do you make of our open borders? I'd love to know what you make about that. Open borders? Absolutely. I'm refugees. Welcome. I stood up yesterday and said, Welcome. Welcome you know, to your you violence. I mean, aren't you kind of asking for it without a vetted? You know, I keep getting asked if I'm asking for violence, if I'm asking for rape. When I'm Sharia asking law for is the epitome of violence, and, and I and definitely hate. disagree. And Does I every think migrant get a free hatchet like when they come right in? Now I think is what's a hatchet. <laughs> violence and not somebody's religious beliefs. Thanks for your time, though. I really appreciate Hope it. Hope you've got some pepper spray. You know. <laughs> she's saying thanks you for your time. She's out of talking points. <laughs> <laughs> ask her who pays her to be there, and ask. You know, I wonder if she knows she's on, she's an indirect on, on Soros's payroll. That would be my next question for her. But she looks a little preoccupied handing out those bras, you know, my gosh. You know, Alex. I love how the leftists always have women like naked. They say they're not objectifying women, but PETA and Soros always have them half naked. The total objectification, it's just like, it's everything they do is the opposite of reality. Does she have uh, hairy armpits or blue hair? No, Margaret. You know, I, I don't want to. I don't want to disrespect Harry Armpits because we've all been there. But just Alex, you've got some of the most gorgeous women in the world working for you. I've got Leanne to my right. Just the and Millie too, the epitome. We're at the rally then. Millie just left the uh, the flag burning rally. She's got some amazing footage. I can't wait to see it myself. But Millie, what 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 was going on down there? Yes. Yeah, so it seems like everybody's in a heightened state of emotion right now. We have anti-American, anti-Trump protesters in the streets. 
at the same time, we also have... Burning American flags. Yes. Well, they weren't necessarily burning. They were stopping. Um, they had it on, draping on the ground and stopping it and, and yelling out profanities. And uh, basically, they were very much against America and what America stands for. And uh, you and Millie stay right there, Margaret. We're going to come right back to you and Millie to talk about this. We're going to a Soros-sponsored BLM New Black Panther Communist Meeting as well in a couple hours of live feeds of that. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. Stay with us. I'm wearing sunglasses because the light is shooting right through. The sun is shooting right through these big windows over the RNC, the Quicken Loan Center, and it is like torture. So me and Biggs are wearing our sunglasses. We're not trying to act cool, even though it is kind of fun. <laughs> we're the Blues Brothers now. Uh, but we're teleprompter free. We're real media, just real analysis. They've got a, well, tell folks what's coming up. We're going to shoot a quick video of this off the live show and send it out on Twitter and Facebook. It's about an hour and 50 minutes from now. We've got the communist group, the, the, Black, the new Black Panther Party, and the Black Lives Matter people meeting. We're told this is the big enchilada. Everybody uh, who's here in Cleveland needs to be there to cover this. We're going to be there peacefully covering it and asking these folks uh, questions. Because we've seen... The new Black Panther Party, you know, going out and saying kill cops, and it happens, and Obama says, yeah, we got to reform the cops, you know. Average cop pumping gas, it's his fault, blows brains out. Uh, just to me, people go, why are you for the cops, you scumbag? And I'm like, uh, well, I'm not for shooting anybody in the back of the head who had done anything wrong, uh, whether it be a bad cop shooting somebody or it be a crazy person shooting somebody. But statistically, police really aren't doing this. Uh, are the police doing some things that are wrong? Yeah, I'm the guy that's always exposing it, but it doesn't mean I hate the police or want to kill the police. Uh, we're going to go back to our guests that are there on the street, uh, but uh, Joe Biggs, tell folks the details. I want to encourage each and every one of you in the Cleveland area to come out today to the Public Square Park. It's in between 3rd Street and 2nd Street, uh, right in between Prospect Avenue and West Huron Road. Today, Dr. Cornell West, Carl Dix of the Revolution, Revolutionary Communist Party, the New Black Panther Party, and the Huey P. Newton Gun Club will be out there in a huge rally so I want to encourage all of you to come out, wear your Hillary for Prison t-shirts and InfoWars shirt, engage in conversation, ask these guys what they're about, find out what it is they're trying to do, and let's all come together. Let's have a good talk, and let's be peaceful, but this should be a pretty big rally based off the chatter I'm getting here from local law enforcement. All right, uh, let's uh, go back to uh, our crew there on the ground right outside where we're at. Let's go to Margaret Howell. You were uh, there talking... <laughs> Uh, to some folks. We got cut off with a break. Uh, please continue. Well, Alex, I'm here with Millie, and uh, she was just telling me about this protest rally. She, she was, can you tell me a little bit about this, Millie, that we're stomping the yes, flag? so the incident started with the police confiscating the metal pole from this man's American flag and replacing it with a uh, cardboard pole. Then the media encircled the man, um, and I then asked the man, you know, if he felt his rights were being violated, it became clear to me that he didn't care about his rights. He just cared about uh, disrespecting veterans and disrespecting the American flag. Um, then at some point I asked him, you know, don't you think you're disrespecting veterans by draping the flag on the floor and stomping on it? You know, we, we lay the flag over veterans' coffins when they've died. Then a Bikers for Trump man jumped in and they, it, the incident escalated, and they began fighting over the flag. Police had to jump in. You know, things got really heated. It was a pretty intense event. I've never felt safer than when there's a biker for Trump around, you know, honestly. Yeah, no, he, was a ni he was a very nice guy. He was very respectful, and he just couldn't stand seeing the flag being disrespected in that way. And they were yelling F the American flag, and it was just, it was pretty disrespectful on there. Well, sure, let's be clear. Let's be clear here. American flag's been used for some things that are wrong, but also the globalists, when they do that, they're, they're saying our country, our laws, our freedoms, this is a globalist takeover, telling us that they're going to bring it down. And people do have a free speech right to burn it if they want, but they don't have a right to go out in public in front of veterans and try to incite a riot. And, and, and this is disorderly conduct. That's why they're doing this. This is the same crew, the same type of folks that are running this whole destabilization program. So they want to go to a park, like I've done, and burn the U.N. flag. Or, and, and, but I don't run up in front of people and get in their face. And I don't do it at a U.N. building. You know, the point is, they're doing all of this to incite and try to get riots going to say, oh, that's Trump's fault. They've been doing this all along. Let's, let's get our take on that. You know, Alex. 
Look, speaking of violence, so the non-violent girls that don't want any militarization, the ones with just their bras on, they've, they've resorted to vulgarity. They've taken over the street now, and we're right in the middle of the street, and they're actually, one of them's laying on the ground because she, she's, you know, all about the non-violence. Let's well, show that. Let's show that. So the Soros people, I know these tactics, Soros, one of his affiliated groups, are now laying half naked in the street. She's gotten up. I mean, just taking over the whole street. You know, this is a thoroughfare. This road is not closed. People, they need to get to and from. And to take over the middle of the street in bras, just, just, ah. Here we go. Again, if you're a radio listener, we have live feeds at Infowars.com forward slash show. Live covers the RNC. You know, our, our, our sane guy, our guy that was awake, has engaged in one of, in, in a conversation with one of them. Of course, there's no talking to Here, her. here, let's see this conversation. Uh, all I'm saying is, it's not appropriate to be asking women to take their bras off when they're out. It's inappropriate for them to be out here the way that they are. So I How can it be? Much I, I didn't ask them to take it off. I said if we do it, let's do it. Did you ever go to a swimming pool? He's not the only one. Did you ever go to a swimming pool? You're making it up then. You just said, no, I didn't do that. But yes, you did. You so said. which is it? Eric, how you doing? You hanging in there? I'm sorry. You hanging in there? What happened? Oh, he's literally I was joking. Crazy. I'm, I'm hanging in there, dude. You didn't want to drop your pants, don't you? No, no, I don't want to drop my pants. I'm good to go. My pants stay on. I'm good to go. No, no, don't, don't relax. I'm good to go. My pants. I'm sorry. I keep playing. It's all right. It's all right, bro. Uh, my pants are clearly on. What I'm saying is that these women want to say they, they're coming out with their bras off. So what is their point? Okay, bra yeah, bras exposed. What's, what's the point? What's wrong with the bra exposed? I asked them what the point is. Does that threaten you? They're trying to sexualize their message. Then why does it bother you? No, I'm fantastic. I'm not bothered. Okay, so why are you so, making So what is the point? Tell you, them have a, you have a Trump t-shirt on. That offends me. All right, so we've got pseudo-intellectual, the big beard, and he's sitting there, you know, denying all this is going on. All they want is attention. So the guy took over the stage yesterday. He said, what color is my PP? And what color is my urine? I have sex with my wife. It's all just to be shocking to divert from the fact that foreign banks have taken the country over. They're trying to arrest the press. They're trying to bankrupt us. And the borders are completely wide open at every front. Uh, and so it just descends into total idiocy. You've got all these mentally ill, weak people. They're getting $15 an hour from different foundation groups coming in just to sow as much discord as they can. Uh, Margaret, that's just a bunch of idiots uh, out there. Oh, man, Alex. We're, we're, we're down here. We're, we're hoping to bring you guys the latest to what's happening right in front of this convention. But I tell you, some of these arguments, I can't help but laugh. I'm going to have to put this microphone down in a second and just have a good laugh after what I just heard. This guy needs he needs to go home and just have a bath, honestly. Anyway, well, I think Alex, being stinky is powerful. <laughs> Well, they say He's witches like melt like a water so. <laughs> Let's can we move away from him? I am getting sick just now. All right, all right, well, listen, Margaret, pull away from him, rick in order, re reset up. We'll come back to you here in about five minutes. We do have Richard Reeves with us right now. Uh, and Richard Reeves is here, uh, one of our great crew members, kind of behind the scenes, getting a lot of stuff done, but our political correspondent to talk about uh, what Wayne Madsen uh, discovered yesterday. They didn't just try to have this no vote and then try to shield it from Trump, which failed yesterday. Then they claim that uh, Trump's wife is plagiarizing stuff, which isn't true. Now their new stunt is reportedly tomorrow night. They're bragging uh, to our reporters on the ground. Wayne Madsen, they're planning a walkout of Cruz and Rubio delegates to try to embarrass Trump and help Hillary. And we also have the good old suspect Glenn Beck on national TV, ABC News, you name it, uh, saying, you know, vote for Hillary Clinton. I mean, this is the huge Republican establishment proving they're for Hillary. I mean, regardless of what you think about Trump, I mean, Trump's better than Hillary. What do you make of that, Richard Reeves? Well, Alex, thank you. I am broadcasting from the Pirate Mobile Command Center for Infowars.com. And yes, what you saw last, last yesterday was the one of the last dying gasps of the Never Trump movement. They are just on their deathbed. They do have this plan for tomorrow where they're going to try to have some folks walk out. But yesterday, the reports were that they only had Parts of the Colorado and Iowa delegation were all that walked out yesterday when they got shot down over the uh, denial of approving the rules. They wanted to not approve the rules that came out of the Rules Committee, which were in favor of the nomination of Donald Trump. And that indeed is what did get approved yesterday. Basically, what happened was is what we had in 2012, where the Ron Paulers got shut down from even being able to proffer their vote 
at the convention, which it would have been a losing vote, but their votes at least would have gotten counted as part of the nomination process. And you'd have had Mitt Romney, the winner, with X number of votes, and then Ron Paul with a small minority of votes that at least would have showed the contest how it went down. But uh, basically, they were shut down in 2012. The, they were, the establishment shut down the Ron Paulers hard. This time, it was the shoe on the other foot. I'm not necessarily in favor of what they did, but clearly, Trump has a majority of delegates there. And not clearly, he has paper. the popular vote. They tried to convince us he didn't. That's failed. Right. So what do you make of this new report? They're going to try the stunning again tomorrow night. Well, I think that the, their plan is going to fall short. Uh, all these delegates work very, very hard to get in that convention center. So you may have a minority who walks out. Believe me, their alternates are chomping at the bit. There's, you know, all these alternates show up. Most conventions alternates do not show up. The alternates, I'm sure, for the most part, probably 90% have shown up. And if there's any kind of a walkout, you can expect the alternates to fill in. And clearly, the body of delegates for the overall convention is in the 70 to 80% range. So, so Donald Trump's got it. Donald Trump's got it. They're just trying to embarrass him. Like with this thing right. claiming uh, that Melania plagiarized. I read her speech versus the other. This is classic stuff you say about, you know, loving her parents, loving the roots, loving America, the American dream. And, and But it's not even the exact words. Clearly not plagiarism. This is basically stating stuff everybody says. Talk about desperate. This is so obvious. I think this is going to backfire as, as well. Stay there, Richard. I want to talk to you about this straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com. When he said he's on the mobile pirate command base... When Hillary had an exclusion zone a week ago put in to stop our planes from flying starting on Monday, we flew the days before, I said, that's it. A little bird told me there's going to be a micro FM pirate transmitter brought in an open frequency. It covers the whole city. It's 94.5. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live. Richard Reeves joins us on a mobile command bus that is sending out 94.5. We'll have a frequency, obviously, in Philadelphia. Uh, we're going to have aircraft in other parts of the country since they're censoring us there. We're having a gigantic effect. We have mobile uh, TV vans that have giant jumbotrons with 94.5 and Infowars.com for live coverage driving around. I've told folks this year, I normally try to piggy bank some extra money for emergency backup for the Infowars operation. We're hiring new people, new reporters, camera folks, writers. We are putting everything in full push. And we're working 14 to 15 hours a day, not just here, but the crew back in Austin. I want to thank you all for your support, but we are all in. Richard Reeves, what is it like for you? You've been working with me off and on for, I don't know, 18 years or so. Uh, we've covered other RNCs in New York and, and Denver together, DNCs. What is it like just to see what the InfoWar is doing? Not, not bragging about InfoWar, but just an example of populism in the globalist face. We have such devastating success. Hundreds of news articles a day. Hundreds of TV stations covering stuff. We're dominating coverage. Our information's getting out. It's having a huge effect, Richard. That just shows if others take action. Goodbye, New World Order. Absolutely. Two words to describe it. Exhilarating, electrifying. It's been unbelievable to see the progress we've made. Huge progress going on. That's why the Never Trumpers, the last tail end of the establishment faction, they're, they're going to pull whatever they pull tomorrow, their parliamentary trick, but they're going down. And I think one of the key things that happened along the way was Donald Trump hiring Paul Manafort at the suggestion of Roger Stone. That combined with Roger Stone coming on your show, getting all the intel out, rallying the info warriors, and ultimately the most and important Rudge, people of all. But, the, but, but, but again, it's not about credit. I'm not that big. A stone isn't that big. A drudge is big, but not that big. It's, the, the elite is a rotting carcass. All we have to do is stand up against it like an old rotting barn in a big wind. It's going to blow over. I think we've reached that point, Richard. Absolutely. You know, you used to have a little uh, trailer that you would played. It was, I think, from the Dark Crystal where the emperor is on his deathbed and they're trying to grab his uh, scepter. And you know how he, they try to get a scepter from him and he says, I'm not dead yet. And he reaches out and grabs it back. Well, I think we passed the point where the emperor can even say that I'm not dead yet. Uh, basically... The emperor is not able to really reach back for the scepter anymore, except maybe in his uh, death dreams. So, yes, absolutely. I totally agree. In fact, can we come in? When, they got one in German and Chinese. We always should play that one. Play the one in English, Dark Crystal, Death of the Emperor. And, of course, I played this when the Saudi king died. They tried to censor us and got real mad. I said, this is actual footage of the Saudi king dying. <laughs> but that censorship failed. Uh, but, yeah, we should play that because Hillary is literally them trying to reanimate this. 
and, and they've never made themselves more open and more clear. What in your gut, Richard? Because I remember you coming with like a year and a half ago with Stone in the office in that meeting we had. We can't get into the internal baseball of that, obviously. Uh, but just the fact that Donald Trump would basically reach out to us shows you what Dr. Corsi said six months ago is true. He knew him 40 years ago, and Trump has always been an anti-New World Order guy. He was just keeping it stealth until he activated, and they've got a dossier on him, and that's why they're so scared. I really think that's the truth. I think Trump is a, is a stealth patriot. Well, I absolutely think we're going to get the opportunity to find out. I think that, you know, here we are uh, towards uh, about three-quarters through July. So we've got August, September, October for more and more people to wake up. You know, it's that hundredth monkey syndrome where you've got the, the 100 monkeys on the island, and we're up there where probably there's 25, 30, or 40 percent of the monkeys are awake. So if uh, those 20 or 30 percent can just wake up uh, one other monkey, well, you're talking about 60 to 70 percent of us info warrior monkeys are going to be wide awake, and we're going to be ready to fire Hillary. Tipping and point. Donald Trump's going to come in. I think he's going to prosecute her to the max. Uh, you know, this Hillary for prison meme hopefully will become a reality because I know that with the airplanes in the air and the trucks floating around with the ads, everything, that meme has just gotten out there so big. That, and notice uh, everybody, everybody wants her to go to prison with her being above the law. It's just beautiful. And folks say, Hillary might come after you. Like, oh, you mean they might come after me? Oh, I never thought of that. Oh, God, I'm quitting what I'm doing. We were going here to the basically the new Black Panther Party, you know, kill the pig event in an hour. Yeah, yeah we know, okay? People just don't get bigs, the fact that we're committed and they keep telling us, hey, you know, you might get hurt. Oh, really? It's part of the job. It's part of the job. I'm not rolling over and waiting in my house, folks, for people to come well, dig me, you know. And on the field of, the of battle, front? on the field, on the intellectual field. We're on the field. Right out. That's right. That's right, Alex. And speaking of the protesters, I, I, in 2008, I went to the RNC in St. Paul, and what I saw so far over there in St. Paul was a much bigger left-wing opposition. So it's got to be frustrating for poor billionaire George Soros that, hey, he's got unlimited money, but you know what? He doesn't have enough stinky, unbathed protesters to show up at the RNC in Cleveland. That's right. Let's uh, look at some of the scum. Let's come in with the A-Team Abortionist Club, and then we'll go back to Richard and the callers. I'm going to give the number out, 800-259-9231. Open phones, 800-259-9231. That's right. We're Americans. We love freedom. We're standing up for private property, for religious freedom, for family values, for the Second Amendment. Uh, we don't think our troops or our police are perfect, but they're not our enemy. We're not out to kill them. We're here to try to rebuild this country. There's a lot of evil forces that are here trying to bring us down and capture this nation. And if they capture this country, the whole world's got to be in serious fear because then a lot of bad stuff's going to happen. It's our job to do it. We're very honored to do it. We're not heroes. We have the instinct not to be slaves and to fight back against uh, scum. And we're going to go back to Richard Reeves and your phone calls here in a moment. But I was talking to Biggs during the break, and I said, we got to make a bigger deal out of this. I didn't realize dicks, the main provocateur where really bad stuff happens everywhere, is here running the new Black Panther Party and uh, other uh, Soros-connected groups uh, like the communists. Uh, list who exactly is kicking off a rally in an hour in 24 minutes from now. We're going to be there from the start of it. Paul Watson takes over in the next hour, but in about 25, 30 minutes, we're going to start walking over to where we're going to be, just about a block and a half away. Uh, give folks an update on this, Biggs. Everybody needs to tweet this out and Facebook this out now, right now. Dr. Cornell West is a real well-known socialist guy, you know, professor type. He goes around, spews a lot of his, uh, you know, communist propaganda, things like that. Carl Dix is one of the co-founders of the Revolutionary Communist Party, along with their leader, Bob Avakian. And these guys, you will see them all over the country at every single powder keg that goes off, every place like Ferguson, Baltimore, you know, everywhere that there is some kind of racial tension they try to feed on that, and they, they try to empower these young black men to incite violence. You know, in Ferguson, we saw Carl Dix and the group getting people pumped up on the megaphone and then kind of like whispering in their ears, and then you would see these guys throw Molotov cocktails and then attack into the crowd and then start this entire chaotic scenario. And then what does Carl Dix do? He pulls back and kind of sits on the sideline and smirks and then talks about how he's this great leader. You and know, again, they're not even communists. They're globalists. They know who they are. They're above the law. If they were a regular group, they'd be arrested. What they're doing is illegal. 
Yeah, so 4 o'clock today here in Cleveland, if you're in the surrounding area, we want to encourage all of you to come out and show your support for InfoWars.com. Engage these people. And by the way, notice, I mean, th these are the groups with Soros and others that are fomenting everything. I mean, I, 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 just, I just, even hearing about them makes me physically sick and physically angry, but I'm going to be peaceful. Well, George Soros you, is watching these pieces of trash, man. George Soros's group is here in full numbers, moveon.org. They've uh, rented out numerous floors on multiple uh, hotels well, around the area. There's operatives down there. And, and that's what they're doing. They're here to start something. Luckily, it, it hasn't been you know, able to work out yet, but at some point in time, they're going to be able to, to find, they're going to find a weak point, and they're going to hit that weak point and do what they always do, incite violence cause chaos, and then at the end of the day, they're going to blame it on Donald Trump, and then they're going to get their George Soros paychecks, go back to their, their home. They're not even from here. They don't care about going into other events, and they show up. They pull up in like $80,000, $70,000, $100,000 black uh, Mercedes, Jaguars, and they all know it's a con. And they always have these idiot college kids following them. I mean, it's just There was crazy. four school buses that were being police escorted coming down the road earlier. And I'm sitting there thinking, I wonder if these are some of these paid protesters that are being busted. I'm telling in. you, cops are escorting the very people. In some cases, they're going to shoot them in the back. And I, I've just personally had enough of the police putting up with it. You know, we've been talking about these guys being busted, and people laugh. You know, when I was at that last Donald Trump rally, the cops said, hey, we need to push you on this side of the road so these guys can go on this side of the sidewalk and get back to their bus so they can make it in time. And I said, what? Say that again. He goes, oh, yeah, these guys get paid. They're busted in to come here. And we're seeing that George Soros is putting all this money in to do everything he can to stop Trump. And it's just not working because most Americans, you know, most people out there are becoming, the, you know, well, they're starting to wake up. Communists are. They don't know how to put up a pirate radio station or have billboards everywhere or raise the money to put stuff in the air to have the number one meme. It's why we're going to kick their ass. OK, you're getting your butts kicked, period. And I mean politically. I mean politically. But I am not going to sit here and watch this anymore, the destabilization of this country. And I cannot believe they can find sacks of garbage that go along with this. I'm done. I'm done. It was funny. I saw so many people yesterday still wearing their Bernie Sanders shirts, and I kept going up to them. I was like, I was like, how does it feel to get burned by your own man? I was like, the I'm one like guy. Another piece of crap. A, 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 another guy, this one guy, he claimed to be like so perfect, like he was anti-establishment, that he, he was going to actually be this true politician that was going to come in and clean everything up. And what does he do? He sells out to the worst career politician. And then what does he stand up for? What does Bernie Sanders talk about? White privilege. You don't know what it's like to be poor if you're white. Who is the most Which, privileged and, and person? Get killed, Obama says, and Hillary says, whites better listen up, as if a random cop getting killed deserves to if some cop did something wrong. It is the, in another jurisdiction. The, I mean, it, it's just totally... Hillary insane. Clinton's political privilege is showing. She is a the epitome of what white privilege well, I is. I want to say this. This latest guy that shot the cops down in um, Baton, Rouge. Baton Rouge, he was a nation of Islam. We, we, we talked to Farrakhan earlier this year. He said he's worried they're going to foment violence. Even he says no violence. Well, you, he gets the whole thing's coming down. Did you notice how this guy was a former Marine? The guy in Dallas was former Army. Is the next guy going to be former Navy? And then the next guy, former Air Force? It seems like they're doing something to demonize the military as well. They've been doing that oh, on all fronts. I have no doubt fronts. there's not something staged behind this in the Obama administration where, where they can, because, you know, the manuals they say is the veterans are your enemies. It might be totally staged, exactly. I mean, I, I, trust me, the people that died, died and all that. But I mean, no, this, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah, but, 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 I'm saying, but we have to clarify that sometimes. Yeah, into there. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're definitely. Well, the there's White House a, is pushing the whole narrative. They might even be winding the guys up. Manchurian candidates sitting there waiting. Who knows, man? Who knows? Uh, let's. Um, Let's go ahead and go back to Richard Reeves and phone calls. Uh, Richard Reeves, uh, final final breakdowns on day two before we have live coverage tonight, obviously, inside. Well, the final breakdown is, as you and I have discussed a long time ago, is the New World Order does have so many wind-up toys. They've got these Manchurian candidates out there drugged up on Prozac and other psychotropics and uh, brainwashed with so much Internet coming through their smartphones and you name it, all the different multimedia that they do on their end. But even so... No weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. And one of the proofs of that was back in March 11th. That was the Friday night in Chicago that the Donald Trump event got shut down. And what happened just four, four or five days later? Donald Trump wins Florida big time. He won it by double-digit points over uh, Marco Rubio. He uh, did better than expected in Ohio. That's really March 11th. Mark it down, everybody. March 11th. When they had the big protest that shut down the Donald Trump event in Chicago, huge turning point. And so, uh, you know, I could probably list down the down the calendar probably 10 different days when you had these huge turning points 
demonstrating no weapon against us shall prosper. So that's what we have to work with, and we just have to keep pushing that rock, and uh, we're really having results now, Alex. I agree. And once Trump gets in, we can't just abandon him if everything doesn't go perfect. This is the long haul. The globalists don't like him. He's a nationalist. This is the epic battle. Bringing America down wasn't going to be easy. And they say that situation makes great men and great women. That's so true. And Donald Trump has stepped into that place in history. So have we. So has DrudgeReport.com. So have many other patriots out there. And I keep giving DrudgeReport.com credit because the enemies looked at it. and They're really coming after Drudge now and really criticizing him and saying, he's the reason. He's the reason. Uh, and, and, and so that's kind of credit you don't want. But we got to just recognize who's with us on this intellectual battlefield, uh, Reeves. Well, I think, uh, yeah, absolutely, who's with us. Uh, Drudge being on board has been a huge one. I remember when he had his radio show on Sunday nights, and I knew way back then, I think it was 2008, 2009, that Matt Drudge is a listener because I could hear uh, I could hear your words beneath his, his wings. So, uh, Matt Drudge, thank you very much. And uh, one other point that hadn't been brought up well, yet. Well, I don't think I'm he got really everything from me. I mean, I'm just seeing the same thing he's seeing. I just think we're right. similar on views of, like, cloning and – Police state, I mean, you know, you have to be a moron not to see it. He just isn't bought and paid for it. Again, it's just so much credit goes to Drudge because he has been one of the key points, the, the key point that's helped the breakthrough that we're now seeing. And I just want to point out, if this elite's so powerful, how could just a website like Drudge hurt them so bad? Because it was an alternative narrative they didn't control. Well, it's called justice. That's how a website like his can take over like that. It's uh, poetic justice. And uh, one other question that I'd like to posit right now, I know we're about to cut off, so uh, um, I think Donald Trump still knows and believes that Barack Obama has not been ever qualified to be president of the United States. So it's going to be very interesting to see if everything ever that Barack Obama ever signed should be null and void. I would love to see it. I hope that conversation happens when Donald Trump becomes president. It should be a fascinating ride. That's right. They're scared folks, to death. They've got a dossier. They know he's a patriot. They know he's an info warrior. That's why they're crapping their pants about him. They know whatever he does in public, they've got his internet search history. They've got spies around him. They know the guy's an anti-globalist. They know the guys that listen to him full wars. They already know it, so I could say it. And they are crapping their pants, okay? And this is only the beginning. Richard, great job. Keep it up, Richard Reeves. Okay, I want to go well, to they, some phone calls. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Richard. They, they just need to stock up on their Charmin, Alex. That's the last word I got. Stock up on Charmin, New World Order, George Soros. See you later. <laughs> get your diapers on. To get serious, we need to support the info war. Uh, it's the best of times, worst of times. DNA Force is hard to source. It's such high quality, so organic. The Trailblazer, 25% off. We only do that a few times a year. It's about to sell out. Infowarsstore.com, InfoWarsLife.com. But whether it's Secret 12 or Lung Cleanse or Super Mill Vitality or Anthroplex uh, or Child Ease or Knockout or our Oregano Oil, it's all the very best and the lowest prices you're going to find. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Now, I've sold Hillary for President shirts at $5 at $9.95. I'm selling at $19.95 to pay for the banners, to pay for the 18-wheelers with the big signs, to pay for the Jumbotron videos. I kind of went crazy. I've gone over budget because I don't like being censored, but I know you're going to come through. We're already looking at like 80 grand I've spent on these airplanes and everything and, and everything. And it's really paying off. Hundreds of newspapers, TV, Hillary for president. Uh, you cannot, but 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 the, all the shirts, we sell all the ones we have, it's like 60 grand. So, but we got more being printed right now. Everybody's got to go buy a Hillary for president shirt for 1995 uh, so that InfoWars doesn't get on the hole. Because I want to really go crazy with airplanes at the DNC. We're looking at blimps as well. We're not going to be censored. InfoWarsStore.com. Get your Hillary for president shirts today. Look in the last eight months how far that meme's come. Uh, it, it's ridiculous. I was looking at the cover of every major newspaper in America today, <laughs> and our T-shirt is on every single one. At some point, I've been of waiting way, for this. A it long is the most time. amazing thing. I just walk up. Uh, I was walking up and down the street friend. outside the convention center, mm -hmm. and my eyes started tearing up because I was trying to hold back the laughter of just like. We're going to, like, take her down as far as this. people are starting to wake up and see. People don't know. Good people have initiative, too. When we take action, we win in history. When we lay down, we fail. In one block we will that attack. I walk, we will win. In one block that I walked just a minute ago, I saw 15 of those shirts. Just in one block. The yeah. drive here from my spot where I'm staying... 30, 40 tons of them. They're every single way. <laughs> the rally yesterday, almost everyone in the crowd had on a Hillary for Prison t-shirt. It is amazing. And it's, everyone stops 
And they go, what does that shirt mean? Why? Why? Why does she need to go to prison? And it allows us to engage in a conversation and teach these people who have no clue about who Killary really is, about all the things she's been involved yeah, and in. And we're not laying down to that witch. She's not, she's not going to buffalo us. We're not coward. We're not broke back. We're taking action. What about you? Get your Hillary for president shirt. I know you already have one. Buy another one. Give it to friends and family. I'm telling you, the war is now. The war is an info war. We're going to win. Great point, Biggs. Uh, let's go ahead and take a call here. Who's been holding the longest here? Here. Uh, let's talk to Tyson in Texas. You're on the air, Tyson. How you doing, uh, Alex Jones? Good, my friend. Joe Big. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I was calling because I know y'all, I, I understand Black Lives Matter, George Soros, and I don't even get down with Black Lives Matter. I just don't think that y'all can group every movement for black justice in with Black Lives Matter because it's not true. And my number one problem with the cops, I can use an example. The same way people don't want to be on the no-fly list without any judge or jury or anything saying you can get on the no-fly list, is the same way black people don't want to be killed in the streets by cops without even getting to a court to see a judge. Well, let me give you the statistics. Statistically, there is isn't more killing. There is more searching. There is more harassment. There is some racism in some areas. I'm not going to deny it. I've been arrested four times peacefully for protesting. I've run into thug cops. I'm a guy that made films about it, wrote books. I totally get it. All I'm saying is, statistically, being disrespected by bad cops or being hurt by them is one of the rarest forms out there. I mean, a shower is the most dangerous thing to an American or your car. And so all I'm saying is the globalists are taking it as a way to create all of us infighting that will only make stuff worse. I mean, if, I, if I went outside and started waving a gun around, cops are going to come and they're going to put me down. And if I then resist arrest, there's a good chance I'm going to get shot. Yeah, but, uh, well, and most of those are, but there are some cases where the cops just oh, crazy well, and oh, pulls a gun out and shoots somebody in the back. Oh, there was a guy here in Cleveland who didn't have a license plate on the front of his car, and the cop shot him right there. Shot him. I went to the scene of that last year when I was out here last summer. There's a lot of instances where bad things happen, and there's some that happen to people that get politicized. This shouldn't really get politicized because if you're waving a gun around, that's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, there are certainly some guys that got chips on their shoulders that are wimps. Oh, they get high. They shouldn't be hiring wimps at departments. Yeah, you get people out there with these ego, maniacal, these power trips that are just out there because maybe they didn't get picked a sure, sure a footballer. Absolutely, but sir, what, what was your final point on that? Okay, well, my final point is I, I think black people and white people uh, need to get to know each other's uh, history and heritage and plight better. And then maybe we could, you know, get further along because as long as we're saying, oh, that's white people problem or that's black people problem, we're never going to see eye to eye and that's going to keep the beef. But if we can generally show that we care about what's going on with each other, then I think we could fix it. And I don't believe it's all just police. But I know black people still got to do a lot to clean up their own community. Absolutely. Absolutely. All of us have issues. All of us have problems. And it's true that black community has been engineered by the globalists to fail. That's declassified. So blacks are victims. But the people saying, we're going to help you, your victims, want to screw you over more is what I'm saying. The same folks that screwed you over are now trying to give you a helping hand. Believe me, they're not. Dude's jumping in here. Yeah, I just wanted to add something. I've had major dealings with the cops by driving around, going through all these security checkpoints, and even and watching them uh, break up a, a, a potential riot situation or fight between two, uh, you know, the liberals and, and the conservative Trump people. And they've been professional, courteous, nice. I haven't seen one cop that I would say that guy's out of control at all. And I'm not a big, uh, you know, I've been arrested before, so I'm not a big, you know, cheerleader for police. I, I just like them to do their job. And I've, I've seen nothing but them doing their job lately. That's right. I'm going to skip this break. I'm going to even cut off that great outro music because we've got Paul Watson coming up. Thank you so much, Tyson. Uh, let's go ahead and take another call. Let's talk to Jack in Illinois. Jack, you're on the air worldwide. Go ahead. Yeah, it's great that uh, all the victories are coming, Alex, but... Have you asked God forgiveness for your adultery with your wife? Well, I don't know what you're talking about, but it's good to have a Pharisee call in and accuse me of some made-up garbage. But I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, uh, number one, you called in and lied about what you were calling about. We don't screen your calls, by the way. You could have said you were going to say that. I had you on. BLM should be banned at RNC. And then, and then they just call in with all this weird stuff or like, you're Bill Hicks, or you work for the Vatican, and all. I'm not even Catholic. I mean, it's just like bizarre mental illness, but I guess that makes you feel good with your five or six Facebook followers. Uh, let's go ahead and take another call here. Let's talk to Peter in Washington. Peter, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hello. Can you hear me? I can. All right. Um, 
What I'm going to tell you is something that concerns me, and that's these electors uh, that that secret the crypto Trump people were working in the Washington uh, state convention, and they got both electors. And I'm not saying those guys are crooks; I don't know them. But here's the thing: I want to re- uh, historical event in 1972. An elector from Virginia, Republican elector, instead of voting for Richard Nixon, who honestly won the election, voted for the libertarian presidential and vice presidential candidates. And uh, I forget the name of the president. But nothing came of it because Nixon was still elected. Yeah, but you see, if you could get enough fakes, you could uh, uh, get get it into the... uh, uh, into Congress, the election. Yeah, no. Well, they're, they're, enough they're, of those. The groups. neocons and the rhinos are trying that right now. You're absolutely right. Uh, the question is, after we saw the popular vote, they have the political will to try it. It will backfire on them. I mean, I don't see any way they're going to get away with this. Do you, uh, Biggs? They just want to embarrass yeah. Trump. They're trying to do whatever they can to embarrass him, but it's not going to happen. People talk about this Bernie Sanders movement. There's a far bigger movement going on right now, and that's the the patriotism behind Trump. The people that are willing to come out here, they know that there's a good chance that they can be attacked wearing a Trump T-shirt. And I see more people walking around with those Trump shirts on with their heads held high. There's been a large movement to promote what it is to be an American, to be proud about it, to say the national anthem, to pray. You know, the fact that religion is almost being banned in schools now and the fact that you can't wear an American flag T-shirt at your school is completely out of control. And people see that. And what Trump's doing, he's bringing back that patriotism. It's okay to be an American. It's great to be proud. Stand up for what you want. The freedoms, having our guns, having our freedom of speech, that's what it all means. That's what Trump's doing. Yeah, that's it. We're not running up the white flag. We're not giving up. Great points, caller. I appreciate your call. Trevor in Canada, you're on the air worldwide. Go ahead, Trevor. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Good, my friend. Hey, uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of talk about uh, call me and the... the, uh, Indictment on Hillary there, well the fake indictment. Or lack thereof. The uh, basically what's going on is uh, they throw that in your face so hard. Uh, like how many things have we ever seen uh, over the years in your face? And if like uh, if you see that where he comes out for 15 minutes, tells you everything that she did illegally, says we're not going to indict her, and then but if anybody else does it, we're going to indict it. I think that's uh, played a big part in waking a lot of people up. No, I agree. We saw her numbers drop even further when that happened. I was kind of mad at the FBI director, but if the whole process is rigged already, him kind of saying she's bad, but then we can't do anything, that was even more obvious. That, it was reverse psychology. That shows that political privilege that she has. But it might have made her an underdog if she actually got indicted. In a way, it's kind of sickeningly defeating her. Yeah, it, it's weird. I, when I talk to people out here, they're kind of like, you know what? That was it for me. That's the straw that broke the the camel's back to to see that she can get away with something like that because they know that if they did it, if anyone else would have committed those crimes, they would be in jail right now. You're absolutely right. Anything else, uh, sir? Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, like I'm up in uh, the social socialist utopia Canada, but uh, I work with a couple Americans there, and then uh, all. Uh, I just lost I can't his believe, call. Like, they couldn't believe what they saw. Well, there is. Oh, your call's coming in and out. Thank you. Now they can't believe what they saw. Okay, let's take some other calls. Now let's talk to Dave and PA. You're on the air. Dave, go ahead. Yes, good afternoon there, Alex. Yeah, a lot of people up here really like my uh, Hillary shirt. Uh, they, I, I wear that out proudly, and I spread the word around about the info wars and about how corrupt her and her scumbag husband is. But well, you are the info war. I want to salute you and every man, woman, and child that's doing it. God bless you. The real reason why I'm calling you is because there's this one television station up here that keeps showing this advertisement where Donald Trump is mocking a paralyzed person. And they keep showing this commercial over and over and over and over. Like, they're really, like, yeah. trying to put a hit piece out against him in a negative yeah, way. Yeah, it was a journalist. Really... It was a joke. It wasn't real. It's fake. Yeah, I kind of figured this much. But the way how they're making it seem, they're making it seem like as if he, he, he did it for real. And Both he has awesome. the details. Come over and explain it to people. I remember vaguely following him. Yeah. No, Trump would never do that. It's, it's, a, it's a joke. Explain it, by the way. Well, I don't know the absolute circumstances here, but um, I have read a couple stories on it. And essentially, um, he is a journalist who Trump, who has interviewed Trump a number of times. And they're friendly and familiar. And so there was some miscommunication in a couple different times where 
uh, he said something about him when he attacked him. And it was, you know, it, it wasn't a joke, but it was just about him, regardless of whether or not he was, uh, uh, you know, uh, whether he, he he was disabled or not. And he did, he kind of went yeah, like, Trump will like, attack you and like if you're he disabled was, or a woman or a man or not. Exactly. And he kind of went like, oh, like he was stupid. Not like he was like disabled, but he, but that's just kind of one of his mannerisms. So, I mean, I don't know. Trump is, Trump is like Alex. He's not, he's unfiltered. He says what he's going to think. And, you know, a lot of times it may be politically correct. And if somebody else is attacking him, he doesn't, he, 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 he takes off the gloves. Yeah, sure. You that's know, there's no What do you that, think so. of the piece though? I mean, I hear this over. He made fun of a, you know, I mean, I mean, what about Obama's executing veterans that need health care with a death list? I mean, yeah. It's like, oh, that's okay, though. But, uh, there are all the drone strikes in Yemen that have killed hardly any high-value sure, targets. Any, anything else, Yeah, I, I think all these Hillary Clinton supporters must be on some kind of narcotics or something, because who in their right mind would want to support her with her track record? I hear you. Listen, we're out of time. Let me say one last quick thing on this is that that right there just proves you that they don't have any dirt on him. If they're going back 10 yes. to 15 years to find one five second comment, that's what they have on Donald Trump. And that's it. And that's nothing. Because the guy yes. doesn't even drink. I don't folks that actually know him. He's giant. When you can't get anyone steaks, on somebody. You take these low blows. He, he milkshakes, ice cream, he pigs out. OK, that's what he does. He's popcorn. He loves America. Listen, let's go further here briefly. We're going to go to break. I'm going to air the Dinesh D'Souza interview that Leanne McAdoo did when we come back in 70 seconds. Then Paul Watson takes over from London, England. But that uh, five-minute interview with Leanne McAdoo with Dinesh D'Souza is coming up. Tomorrow, we've got uh, Roger Stone in studio. We're working on Dinesh D'Souza. We've got uh, uh, coming up either, Thursday, or either Wednesday or Thursday, Ted Nugent. So much more. But a lot of videos coming out at InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.com. So much. Please support us. DNA Force is 25% off today only because it's going to sell out. Other products at InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com. Your purchases make this broadcast everything we do possible. Great job with the crew. Hour number four, straight ahead. Stay with us. Leah McAdoo with InfoWars.com. We're here at the RNC and here at the premiere of Hillary's America with Dinesh D'Souza. How are you doing here tonight? Very exciting to be here for the film. I'm super excited to be here. Um, this movie can play a big role in unifying the Republican Party, but also uh, giving it to Hillary and the Democrats. My Obama movie four years ago was just about Obama. This one is about progressivism and the whole sordid, repulsive history of the Democratic Party. We lay it all out there. And so it, uh, I'm very excited to be sharing this message with delegates who can carry it uh, all across the country. Right, and you say Hillary's America is going to be utterly terrifying. You would, you would know. You've actually been had firsthand experience of uh, someone with major political power using that power to target their political opponents. What would you want to say to the opponents of Hillary Clinton if, if she becomes president? Well, I think that there's a. I've seen a kind of a thuggishness in American politics that wasn't there before. Um, in the, I'm a, I'm a product of the Reagan era. And, you know, you had people who disagreed, Reagan, Mondale, Dukakis, and it was a sort of a gentleman's fight. Uh, but these guys who are in there now, are uh, um, their idea is that if you disagree with them, they kind of want to put you out of business, they want to lock you up, they want to get, take you off the stage, so to speak. Obama is, is, there's a gangster streak in Obama, but his goals are ideological. His gangsterism is the means. Hillary, I think, is a gangster par excellence. That's her MO. That's who she is. And so I'm a little worried that uh, Hillary presidency would essentially uh, bring a sort of third world uh, gangster mentality to the United States. Absolutely. And, and talk about no government accountability. What did you think of the reaction to her FBI probe? And then now they're pushing it back. They're not going to delve into the Clinton Foundation for 27 more months. Well, one thing I learned in confinement was that uh, we as conservatives and as Republicans, it's just foolish for us to cross our fingers and wait for other people to do our work. We have to do our own work. So all the Republicans who kind of naively were saying, oh, wait till the FBI indicts her. No, the FBI is under Obama's thumb. Loretta Lynch works for Obama. Obama's been signaling for two months. Hillary's my gal. Leave her alone. So I was not optimistic this would happen. Uh, and, and in fact, we uh, went ahead with the Hillary movie in the full confidence that she would be the nominee. Right, absolutely. And so one last question, obviously, breaking news out today. Some more police officers slain there in Baton Rouge. Did you think years ago making Obama's America that this would be happening? Police officers would be targeted, uh, potential civil war. We're seeing massive racial uh, imbalance here. I mean, what do you think about this? You know, and the way I look at it is that the, the liberal plantation is boiling over. And what I mean by that is that the left has over 50 years um, 
taken the old plantation model. There was a rural model when you, you had slave uh, quarters and all, and, and recreated the plantation in the inner city. Except now it's not just for blacks. It's barrios for Hispanics and reservations for the American Indians and slums. And so these are horrible places to live. The family structure is broken down. There's no hope. It's very difficult. You get a meager living, basic health care, but you got basic health care on the old slave plantation as well. And so the left has created this. This is, demo this is the product of the Democratic Party. They have to answer for it. And I think a lot of the urban strife comes out of the hopelessness of that environment created by the left and the Democrats. Absolutely. Who are you going to vote for? Who should America vote for? Uh, I'm going to, well, I can't vote because I'm a convicted enemy of the state. So I'm not going to be voting, but I'm going to try to convince millions of people to vote for Trump and to vote a straight Republican ticket. American politics is fought in teams. And so at the end of the day, there's only one group that can stop Hillary and the Democrats. That's Trump and the Republicans. You know, it's like 150 years ago. Who could stop slavery? Not even the abolitionists. It was only the Republican Party. So by, by winning the 1860 election, the Republican Party set off the train of events that brought slavery to an end. Uh, the Re it's the Republican Party is the party to vote for straight down the line. Thank you so much. Really excited to see the movie. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back live. It's the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show with me, your host, Paul Joseph Watson. And the religion of peace strikes again and again and again. Now we've had another two attacks over the last 24 hours alone not getting too much media attention because, of course, they don't fit the narrative. This is out of RT. German train attacker left suicide note warning about attack. Now, of course, we covered this story yesterday. I was doing a live blog feed when this was unfolding. And it turns out now that, of course, he left the suicide note. He was a 17-year-old Afghan migrant who had come in as a result of Angela Merkel's humanitarian culturally enriching wave of mass migration. Pages from a notebook found at the home of an Afghan teen who attacked passengers on a German train with an axe. I guess we have to ban assault axes now. May be regarded as a suicide note, police and investigating officials said during a press briefing on Tuesday. And it's surprising that they're actually even giving a press briefing, given the fact that in the past, German police have been ordered to cover up details about migrants committing crimes. We had the uh, incident just after the Paris attacks where it was uh, a Germany versus France soccer match at the stadium before the game. The police testified, the EMTs testified that they had found bombs in a fake dummy ambulance. That got covered up pretty quickly. The head of ZDF, Germany's top broadcaster, came out and admitted that they basically report what they're told to report by the German government. You had the mass molestation of women in not only Cologne, but also Hamburg on New Year's Eve. That was covered up for several days by the police authorities, by the German government, despite the fact that details emerged on social media almost immediately. So again, it's a surprise that we even get to find out the identity of this axe attacker at all, given the cover-up that we've seen in the past. But in this so-called suicide note that they found in the apartment belonging to this terrorist, and of course, you know, Obama will probably come out later and claim that this was just workplace violence. It says, addressing his father, the young man asked him to pray that he could take revenge on the infidels. This was in the suicide note of the axe attacker in Germany. Again, three people critically injured, still in hospital, others injured, others traumatized. He left a suicide note saying that he wanted to take revenge on the infidels. Nothing to do with Islam. The train attacker was a devout Sunni Muslim. Again, nothing to do with Islam. He didn't visit a mosque regularly, but had probably prayed privately. Having studied the man's presence on social networks, investigators said, he had published a post against, quote, enemies of Islam some 24 hours before the attack. So again, nothing to do with Islam. He's out there saying that he plans to take revenge on the infidels. He's talking about punishing the enemies of Islam. He goes out, gets this train, which is in quite a rural area. And again, hacks these people, 
You look at the pictures, go and look at the pictures on Twitter of this attack. Again, blood splattered everywhere. And this was not in a major city. This was in quite a rural area, you know, in Germany. This wasn't Berlin. This wasn't Dusseldorf. This wasn't Munich. This wasn't any of the major cities. It was a quiet, remote location. This stuff is becoming so common, so prevalent, that it's now reaching into the remote areas of these countries because, again, and you can, you can read the interviews of these people in this area conducted by these news agencies after this attack, and they said, as soon as this happened, and we'll get to the, these stories soon, as soon as this happened, they knew. They knew that it would be one of the refugees, one of the migrants that had moved into the local area. And sure enough, that's exactly what it proved to be. Now, we have this clip from the Alex Jones show, which I was a guest on last week and talked about, predicted this very thing. Of course, this was a minor attack in comparison to something like the Nice attack. But I was on the show around six days ago and said that attacks were coming in Germany. So let's go to that clip. I'll just blame that as well. Sure, so what comes is... next? I mean, where does this all end, Paul? Well, it's, we're in a war. I mean, the, the head of the French police last week said one or two more Islamic terror attacks in France. It's civil war. Now, the French have largely capitulated. I, what I'm predicting is this is going to happen in Germany. There's going to be a massive attack. And there's going to be a massive backlash. There's going to be civil unrest. There's going to be riots on the streets. It's only... So that was me on the Alex Jones show six days ago predicting that Germany would be attacked next. Now, of course... There are guaranteed to be bigger attacks on than this axe attack, which took place on a train last night. Thankfully, as far as we know so far, nobody has died, but again, three people at least critically wounded. And why is it easy to predict that there are going to be more attacks and that there's going to be mass civil unrest? There's going to be riots on the streets. Well, because it's not just me saying it. It's the head of the French police forces saying it. If there's one more jihadist attack, if there's one more mass molestation like we saw in Cologne, people are going to completely revolt. Merkel is extremely unpopular already, and they've just about had enough of it. This article was put up on Infowars.com yesterday. Again, got very little attention comparatively. Council member, French citizens are getting ready for war. Gun club memberships quadruple after terror attacks as mood turns nasty. Now, this again wasn't in a major city. This is in a quite a rural, remote area where these people, these gun club members, quadrupling their membership. Again, it's difficult to get access to a firearm in France. You've got to be a member of a gun club. You've got to jump through 20 different flaming hoops. But more and more people are doing it. This was a city councillor in southern France who warned that some French citizens are gearing up for civil war. Again, his words, not mine. As memberships of gun clubs explode in the aftermath of three massive terror attacks that have rocked the country. In an article entitled What Next, Could France Be Facing a Civil War? Author Jonathan Miller, who is an elected council member in the village of Co, asserts that the Nice truck attack has, quote, shaken France to the brink of, an es of a terrifying escalation. He says that France, quote, may be on the edge of something resembling a civil war, and that membership in his local gun club has, quote, quadrupled from 200 to 800 members in the last few months alone. They asked one of the local residents, one of the gun club members, why this was happening. He said, quote, they're getting ready for war. This is France. This is not even Germany, where you would probably expect a bigger reaction. But again, the government is out there saying, and the, the head of the French police is out there saying, well, you know, this is just a right-wing backlash trying to shift the blame onto the right wing. Not that this is a problem with inviting in over a million people into Germany, a situation in France where you've already got a large Muslim population. They had mass riots in 2005. Like Sweden, like other European countries, they have no-go Muslim ghettos where you get physically chased out. Same in Belgium, Brussels, Molenbeek, where we were chased out, myself, Joe Biggs, and uh, Michael Zimmerman. This is the situation in France. This is what they've created. 
And now you have ISIS in their own manifesto saying, yes, we're going to exploit this refugee program to create more of these Muslim ghettos, which are all celebrated by the left. They want to create more of them. Of course, when you actually look where the leftist politicians live in every European country, it's always in the whitest area possible. They're big cheerleaders for these Muslim ghettos, these immigrant ghettos. They won't live anywhere near them because they're complete hypocrites who are completely shielded from the consequences of their own policies. So we had that situation again. Here's a quote from one of the local residents there in this area of Germany that suffered this axe attack. Quote, I assumed right away that it would be an asylum seeker before we knew, said Michel Uabor. Quote, anyone is being allowed in here and we're practically being overrun. We have no control over who's in Germany. So again, you're starting to see this backlash build. We saw it the other day in Nice with Manuel Valls, the French prime minister who said that French people just need to learn to live with terrorism, need to learn to live with the mangled bodies of dead children on their city streets. Well, they're not having it anymore. They booed him, they whistled him, they called for his resignation at the actual memorial after the Nice attack. So you're starting to see somewhat of a shift. It's no longer pray for Nice or hug a Muslim or, oh, let's just blame all this on Western foreign policy and Islamophobia. They're actually starting to get angry. They're actually starting to demand change. So again, we have this situation in France. This is out of RT. Man stabs mom and three daughters at French Holiday Center over shorts and t-shirts. You remember back last year, we had the report out of Germany where the headmasters at the school sent letters out to parents saying, don't let your children wear short skirts as school uniforms. Don't let them wear shorts because they put a migrant center in the gymnasium on the school property. So again, they don't have to assimilate to our culture, but we need to cover up our children, Sharia law style, so the culturally enriching Muslim migrants don't rape them. Now these children, one of them is basically in intensive care on the verge of death. A 37 year old man identified as Mohammed B, imagine my shock, has stabbed a mother and her three daughters at a vacation center in Southeast France for being dressed too lightly, local authorities said. The man attacked the woman and her daughters aged eight, 12 and 14 in the resort town of Laragne Montaglin in the Hautes Alpes region of France, outraged at the fact that they were wearing shorts and t-shirts. And the authorities are all, oh, we don't know if there's a religious motive here. We're back live on the Alex Jones Show. So basically, in summary, you had a 17-year-old Afghan migrant who had entered Germany two years previously, shouting Allah Akbar while hacking people with an axe on a train. Before the attack, he had posted that he wanted to punish the, quote, enemies of Islam and that he wanted to kill the infidels. Again, nothing to do with Islam. We can blame this on Western foreign policy. We can blame it on Islamophobia, anything so we can continue to stick our heads in the sand as this happens on a daily basis now. Almost on a daily basis. We talked about France being hit with an attack on a bi-monthly basis. You take Europe as a whole, it's almost becoming a daily occurrence because today, again, it's been revealed that Mohammed B stabbed a mother and three daughters. One of those daughters, an eight-year-old girl, is in critical condition. Again, stabbed them because they weren't covered up, because they weren't wearing hijabs, because they were, quote, lightly dressed at the height of frigging summer in a southeastern French holiday resort. And oh, we don't know his motivation. We don't know if there was a religious motivation. He's called Mohammed B. He's from Morocco, which is 98.7% Sunni Muslim population. Oh, I wonder. I wonder what the motivation is. I'll give you three guesses and the first two don't count. But again, nothing to do with Islam. So long as we keep repeating that claim, we can continue to bury our heads in the sand 
have Stockholm syndrome and pretend that this isn't a massive problem. So you had the axe attack. You had another stabbing. Bearing in mind, again, that ISIS has told its adherents to carry out stabbing attacks. And again, after every single attack, you hear, well, he wasn't an ISIS member. You don't have to be an ISIS member to be inspired by its hateful rhetoric and ideology. This is not a group. It's only a militant group if you're out there fighting in Syria or in Iraq. There are probably hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people living in the West right now who are inspired by this rhetoric. We saw the polls out of France, you know, 35% of Muslims in France support suicide bombings under some circumstances. You look at young people, that figure climbs to 42%. So you don't have to be a member, an actual member of ISIS in contact with ISIS commanders for this to be a problem. We hear that after every single attack. And again, it's a way to deny that this is an issue. It doesn't matter if they're directly in contact with ISIS people, if they're following ISIS commands to the letter in carrying out these attacks, then what's the difference? Now, after the axe attack in Germany, you had Renata Kunas, this prominent left-wing politician, actually put out a tweet saying, why did they have to shoot dead? the axe terrorist in Germany. I mean, he was only hacking people with an axe. It might might have been Islamophobic for the police to actually shoot him dead. She actually put out that tweet. This is the attitude amongst the left wing in German politics. We've seen Green Party members get up in front of the German parliament and say, in 20 years, there'll no longer be a German majority in major German cities. And that's a good thing, really. That's a good thing, is it? Over a 1,000 women molested and raped in Cologne. That's a good thing. Hundreds more in Hamburg on the same night. This mass cover-up of this crime wave that's going on, that's all a good thing, according to the left. Because, again, many of them have aligned themselves with Islamists because they both hate the West. Now, I know it sounds like a cliche, but it's true. I mean, look at this article out of the Daily Caller. Media paints Steve King as racist for defending Western civilization. He actually got up on MSNBC and said, well, yeah, actually, Western civilization has contributed quite a lot to the development of humanity throughout history. Oh, my God, what a racist. I mean, I've got an entire list of what the Greek society, the Greek civilization alone contributed to Western civilization, to human development. Typography, poetry, the science of philosophy, humanism, democracy, the development of mathematics, the alphabet, the Hippocratic Oath, the science of history, logic, the science of anthropology, the Olympic Games, the thermometer, central heating, geometry, the invention of cartography. You can go on for an hour listing what Western civilization has contributed to the development of humanity. Is it racist to simply bring that up? Well, yes, according to MSNBC. Yes, according to Chris Hayes. This guy is a racist, a white supremacist, merely for suggesting that Western civilization had a positive role in the development of humanity. The left has aligned itself with Islamists. They both hate the West. We'll be back. We are back on the fourth hour overdrive of the Alex Jones Show. And talking about the religion of peace, perhaps we should do a weekly segment here called This Week in Death Threats. You remember I talked about this last week? Well, on Sunday evening, after the Baton Rouge murder of three cops, again by somebody obsessed with Black Lives Matter issues, you know, I put out the article, people on Twitter celebrating the deaths of these cops. Well, that resulted in more threats. They actually said that they had my address. These were people in London. You could tell that they were in London by their Twitter profiles, sending me private messages saying, yeah, basically, we know where you are and we're coming to get you. And people say, well, why don't you report it to the police? If I, rep- if I spent my time reporting these threats to the police, that's all I'd do. <laughs> I wouldn't have time for anything else because it's almost on a daily basis now. And you think of, the, of those people who, you know, actually go out to these draw Mohammed cartoon events, actually get out in public 
you know, people like Pamela Geller, people like Tommy Robinson. Just imagine the volume of death threats that they get. Yet they're out in public, in many cases without security, they put up with it. Muslim reformists like Ayan Hirsi Ali, her colleague, was killed on the streets of Amsterdam simply for being her colleague, simply because she's an ex-Muslim who speaks out against things like honor killings, things like Sharia law, simply says we need to reform Islam. Her colleague, again, killed on the streets of Amsterdam. So if those people can put up with it, then I can put up with it. So I'm not going to waste my time reporting this to the police. Again, in 99% of cases, it's going to be completely aimless anyway. It's people trying to intimidate you. This is what the left does best. But it's funny just to highlight this and to showcase it, because again, we saw, you know, after Gamergate, after all these other issues, these controversies, oh, the violent right wing is harassing people on Twitter. They're so misogynistic. They're so hateful. They're so intolerant. Well, I mean, just go and, go and search assassinate Trump. Go and search kill Trump on Twitter. At any minute of the day, you will find hundreds of people threatening to do it, or at least asking other people to do it. The left is the most violent and intolerant group in society today. Yes, there are some crazy people on the right wing. There are some crazy neo-Nazis. But by and large, actual physical violent threats, they come from the left. They come from Islamists. And talking about the religion of peace, well, this individual contacted me because he was so upset about me saying in a YouTube video that Islam is not a religion of peace that he would kill me to prove that it was a religion of peace. <laughs> this message was sent to me last night. F you, mother effer. How dare you say that Islam is not a religion of peace? I will come to your house and kill you. <laughs> so he's going to prove that Islam is nonviolent by violently killing me. Okay, that makes sense. And that's just a taste of it. This is almost on a daily basis now. And again, I'm not going to call the police because it's just a complete waste of time. If somebody had my exact address and they were saying, this is where you live, I'm going to come and get you now, then maybe. But this is just to showcase what people who speak out against the violent intolerance of Black Lives Matter, against the violent and, and intolerant aspects of Islam, this is what they go through. And in many cases, they remain completely silent about it. Meanwhile, over on the left, the feminists, the anti-Gamergate people, constantly whining and whinging, trying to classify criticism of their lame, stupid arguments as cyberbullying and harassment, going in front of the UN and putting pressure on governments to regulate the internet so people can be censored for criticizing feminists. That's what they see as harassment. That's what they see as cyberbullying. Meanwhile, you know, people like Tommy Robinson, people like Pamela Geller, whether you like them or not, every single day, bombarded with death threats, threats of physical violence. It's the complete double standard and hypocrisy of the tolerant left, which in reality is completely intolerant. This is out of the mirror. Nice ISIS attacker seen in chilling selfie posing by truck he used to kill 48 people. And so the narrative again, oh, he was so depressed. His wife had left him two years previously. You know, maybe it was road rage. Maybe it was workplace violence. After all, you know, he was just delivering ice cream. That's why they let him on the road in the first place. Maybe it was nothing to do with Islam. These are the chilling selfies Bastille Day killer Mohammed Lahulaj Boulel took with the truck he used to massacre his 84 victims. The grinning Tunisian posed with a pal inside and outside the 19-ton white lorry just days before the atrocity. In one, he holds his middle finger up inside the cab, and in the other, he smiles as he stands next to the vehicle. And of course, he sent these photos out to his friends, out to his family. Didn't look to be too depressed at the time again, just days before he engaged in that horrific rampage. Here's a video I put together in the aftermath of the Nice attacks called Nice terrorist attack, what they're not telling you. Here's the clip. 
Well, yet yeah, again, here I am talking about the religion of peace. People are asking, why does France keep getting attacked? I'll tell you why. Because of spineless so-called leaders like Hollande and French Prime Minister Manuel Valls, who actually said today that France must learn to live with terrorism. To a jihadist, that's like a red flag to a bull. It's total capitulation. If you're prepared to tolerate little children getting crushed by lorries on the streets of major cities, what else are you willing to tolerate? Sharia law? Islamists in positions of political power? Areas of Europe becoming Islamic caliphates? When Islamists hear things like what Vol said, they smell blood in the water. They know they're winning. That's why France keeps getting attacked. The terrorists are winning. They're winning because they're protected by a left-wing denial industry based around Stockholm Syndrome, apologia and bedwetting. A president who dare use the term Islamic terrorism. The future must not belong to those who, sl who slander the prophet of Islam. A presidential candidate who says that Islam has nothing to do with terrorism. A media that is so afraid to use the M-word or the I-word, they'd rather blame an inanimate object. Trucks don't kill people. The ideology of Islam kills people. What are you going to do? Ban assault trucks. A media that bombards us with an image of a dead boy on a beach in Turkey to shame the West into accepting millions of Muslim migrants because it fits their agenda. While refusing to broadcast the images of dead children in Nice because it might upset someone. Because God forbid people might finally start to question if this really is a religion of peace. A left-wing echo chamber that satiates social media with violent videos of black men being shot dead by cops, then implores everyone not to watch videos of the carnage in France because it doesn't fit their Islamophile narrative. Social networks and governments that ban, harass and arrest critics of Islam while jihadists celebrate untouched. Governments across the West who import millions of Muslim migrants, a significant portion of whom support ISIS, a narrative that insists Western foreign policy is solely to blame. Really? So how does that explain why they're slaughtering people in foreign countries that have no connection whatsoever to Western foreign policy? How does that explain why they kill Shia Muslims all over the Middle East? How does that explain why the Quran directs them over and over again to kill the infidels? Now I'll tell you what aspect of foreign policy is to blame. French Prime Minister Valls saying that the jihadist France allowed to leave and enter the country were not a threat because they were, quote, fighting Assad. Just listen to the left's argument every time this happens. We can't allow this to divide us. We can't fight hate with hate. We can't let the right wing take advantage. Yeah, so millions of illegal Muslim immigrants may be entering Europe at an uncontrolled rate and raping and murdering thousands of civilians, but you know what really scares me? It's a political party I don't personally align with being democratically voted into power. If the right wing gets into power, that will just create more division and there'll be more attacks. In other words, we're not being nice enough to the precious Islamists. Don't upset them, appease them. Otherwise, they'll kill us. Yeah, because that's worked great so far, hasn't it? Look, we tried it your way, and you completely failed, okay? Multiculturalism has failed. These jihadists are pouring out of the Islamic ghettos that the left's mass immigration policies created. 35% of Muslims in France support suicide bombings. 42% of young Muslims in France support suicide bombings. There's been a terror attack in France every other month for the past 18 months. More people died as a result of terrorist attacks in France over the last two years than the previous 100 years. There have been 1,268 Islamic terror attacks in 50 different countries so far this year alone. Your Facebook profile pick filters didn't stop that. Hug a Muslim didn't stop that. Pray for hashtags didn't stop that. What will bring a stop to this? Ending the climate of political correctness that stops people from reporting suspicious activity for fear of being called racist. Not importing millions of Muslim migrants, many of whom refuse to assimilate into our society and then help create Islamic ghettos that become breeding grounds for terrorists. Deporting terrorists instead of giving them refugee status in the name of human rights. Deporting hate preachers who infest mosques throughout Europe. A complete 
complete hull on immigration from Muslim countries, recognizing that Islam is not a religion of peace and has been at war with the West for most of modern history. Now, I know that many of you do actually hate the West, and that's why ISIS brags in its own manifesto how they're going to recruit you because you share the same goals. But for everyone else, this is a war. We're in a war. Do you understand that? Nazi Germany was not defeated with hashtags, flowers, candles, or Facebook likes. It's not pray for Nice. It's fight for Western civilization. How many crushed, mangled bodies on the streets of European cities is it going to take for you to realize that? Okay, that up on my YouTube channel, Prison Planet Live. You get that video, share it. Before we move on, though, I urge you to go to InfoWarsStore.com because DNA Force is selling out. This special ends tonight, 25% off InfoWarsLife.com. Now is the time to get it for 25% off before we're forced to pull the special at InfoWarsLife.com. DNA Force is loaded with a patented bio PQQ compound which is backed by 175 clinical studies and extremely hard to secure. We've also got the Hillary for Prison t-shirts, again, making headlines nationwide. We've also got Super Male Vitality back in stock. And again, you can help us hunt down the next Trigglypuff. It's kind of like Pokemon Go, except we're hunting for social justice warriors. Call the Cook, Aid Skrillex, the next Trigglypuff. That's what we want, and you can help us do that. Again, by buying the products, because we send, look at the number of reporters we've sent to Cleveland. Again, this does not come cheap. So please continue your fantastic support by getting the products at InfoWarsStore.com. Now we've got about five minutes left in this segment. Let's talk about Melania Trump. Because, of course, Donald Trump is a racist and a bigot for calling for mass uncontrolled illegal immigration to end but Melania Trump, just listen to some of this. Again, the left preaches bigotry and intolerance when they're talking about people like Donald Trump, when they're talking about the supposed right wing. Listen to how they reacted to Melania Trump's speech last night at the RNC. Now, for, let's brush aside for a second this whole plagiarism scandal. Obama plagiarized speeches. Joe Biden plagiarized speeches. Michelle Obama plagiarized speeches. That's not the issue. Is that dumb that they used almost exactly the same words as Michelle, Michelle Obama's speech from 2008? Well, yes, but it's not the first time it's happened. The bigger controversy here, and this is up on Infowars.com, tolerant leftist Melania Trump is a, quote, dumb bitch who can't speak English. This is the tolerant left. We need a woman in the White House. Criticism of Hillary is sexist. Donald Trump is racist for criticizing illegal immigrants. But Melania Trump is a dumb bitch with a stupid accent who can't speak English and needs to be deported. That was the actual reaction from the progressive liberals in the aftermath of this speech. Again, they're all for women in politics, apart from when those women are conservative. Then they're sluts, they're plastic, they're bitches, they're bimbos, they're tramps, they're stupid. Again, dumb immigrants who can't speak English. That was the reaction from Hillary Clinton supporters after Melania Trump's speech. And they did a study, I think it was out of Vocative here, where they tracked the key words that were associated with Melania Trump in the two hours following her speech. Again, bitch, slot, plastic whore, bimbo, tramp, skank, and a lot worse words that I can't even say. This was the progressive, tolerant, liberal left reacting to a female immigrant giving a speech. Meanwhile, they will call Donald Trump a bigger, a sexist, a misogynist all day for criticizing illegal immigrants, for saying mean things about Rosie O'Donnell, for saying mean things about Megyn Kelly. It's bad when Donald Trump does it, but when his wife simply gives a speech about how she loves her husband and adores her family and how she worked hard, to get out of a crap hole communist country, to come to America, be successful, and become a citizen, well, then she's a dumb immigrant. She can't speak English pop properly. She's stupid. She's a tramp. We should deport her. Again, absolute rampant hypocrisy. She actually speaks 
five languages and is incredibly intelligent, but again, the facts don't matter to social justice warriors. Now, go through the tweets that I included in this article, and most of them have probably been deleted by now because that's what these people do. Once you shine a spotlight on their rampant intolerance, they just delete the tweets. But again, I can't even read most of these because they're so, they're so foul-mouthed. But you've got people saying, oh, I can't even understand her. She can barely speak English. We should deport her back to the third world. And then you've got a raft of people just calling her, again, a dumb bitch with a silly accent who shouldn't even be up on stage. This is the tolerant, progressive, liberal left who, again, will only cheer for women in politics if that woman is a leftist. You've seen it in the United Kingdom with Theresa May, who I don't even like. You know, she, called, she said that Sharia law would be good under some circumstances in Britain. But again, she's a female politician, only the second in 26 years to become prime minister in the United Kingdom. You would think that the left, the feminists, would be celebrating this. Well, no, they hate her guts. They're more mean to her than they were to Cameron. Again, you look at the studies, so-called misogyny, these mean sexist comments made on Twitter, made on social media, 50% of them are made by other women. So this entire narrative, this Gamergate narrative, that, you know, all the misogyny, all the hate is coming from the evil right-winged manosphere, completely debunked once again. Go and look in this article about what these leftists, what these Hillary Clinton supporters said about Melania Trump. Complete hypocrites exposed once again. We'll be back with the final segment of The Alex Jones Show, Infowars.com. Final segment of The Alex Jones Show. Now, of course, before the break, we were talking about the left's reaction to Melania Trump's speech, calling her a dumb, stupid immigrant because she has an accent. The progressive, liberal, tolerant left who will label Donald Trump a bigger all day long for wanting to stop mass uncontrolled illegal immigration, again set their sights on his wife simply because her first language is not English, proving once again that the left's enthusiasm for women in politics completely disappears when they're faced with a woman who contradicts their stupid opinions. And on that very subject, we've got Hillary Clinton giving an interview with Charlie Rose. This came out last night. We don't have time for the clip, but you can see it in the article up on Infowars.com. Hillary's response to charge she's part of the establishment. I'm a woman. Having female genitalia is revolutionary, according to Clinton. Hillary Clinton responded to the charge that she's part of the establishment by asserting that she had female genitalia and that this was revolutionary. Again. Hillary running on her sole campaign platform that she has female genitalia. That's all she's got. So Rose said to her, quote, you come from the establishment. You have a deep political history. You have been part of the establishment since you were the first lady of Arkansas. Hillary responded, I know what the rap is. You've been around since, you know, the beginning of time. She then paused awkwardly, and you can see it in the video. She's basically run out of things to say. And then just plays the gender card completely out of the blue. Quote, having a woman nominated for the first time by a major political party. Oh my gosh, that's revolutionary. So again, it's revolutionary for a major political party to nominate someone who is the consummate establishment insider. Just look at the amount of money she's taken from Wall Street compared to Donald Trump who again is completely self-funded. But Hillary has a vagina and that's all that matters. That makes her revolutionary. So she's brave, she's inspiring, she's making history simply for being a woman. But then Melania Trump gets up on stage, a woman that is an immigrant, a successful immigrant, escaped communist hellhole, worked hard, became successful, learned five languages, she gets up there, gives a 15 minute quite moving speech. Yes, some of it was plagiarized, like two sentences, big deal. They all do that anyway. But again, look at the frothing reaction from the insane, intolerant left. She's a dumb bitch. She's a stupid immigrant. 
She can't even speak English. We need to deport her. Again, they reserve their most vitriolic hate for women who are conservative, or not even conservative, just don't toe their agenda, just don't agree with their every opinion. Complete unbridled hypocrisy. Once again, you can see it up on Infowars.com, where I've noticed all the idiots whose tweets I included in the article are now hastily deleting them. Well, if you're so proud of your opinion, why would you delete it when somebody draws attention to it? And I guess they're all whining about their mentions now on Twitter and claiming that they're being harassed because people are disagreeing with their stupid opinion. Complete hypocrisy and intolerance from the left once again. A couple of final stories. Black Lives Matter activists, we need a military coup if Trump wins the presidency. Sean King, who is actually white, is now out saying that. And there was a Washington Post article today where they compared Trump to Erdogan in Turkey and said, well, maybe we do need a coup if Trump takes the Oval Office. Student leader says cops killed by Dallas sniper are bastards, draws outrage. Again, more unbridled hate and intolerance from the left, from the Black Lives Matter crowd when it comes to the murder of police officers. That's going to do it for this edition of the Alex Jones Show. InfoWars Nightly News coming up tonight. Alex and crew will be back from the RNC tomorrow at 11 to 2. Breaking news, InfoWars.com.